Assalamu alaikum guys It's Sam and brother Faisal Faisal <laughs> From Freshly Grounded Welcome to episode number four, four. We're in our fourth episode now Four Sam. goes quickly I know, I can't wait to get double digits inshallah Inshallah That's six episodes away though <laughs> That's, yeah That's six weeks Six weeks Unless, unless you want to maybe just bang out six episodes right now. <laughs> uh, haven't really got the time for that. No, okay. But I'm enjoying it. I think they're getting they're getting stronger as they go along. Alhamdulillah. How did you get on with this episode? Did you enjoy it? I love this episode, man. So I again, it's, it's full of reminders. Yeah. General conversation. General topic. A little bit of humour. We spoke about Manchester. We spoke about Manchester. We spoke about Brick Lane. We spoke about Brick Lane, yeah. We spoke about uh, cereal. We spoke about... Chocolate coffee. Chocolate coffee? Yeah, that chocolate coffee shop. We didn't speak about chocolate coffee. We spoke about cho- a, a coffee shop that sold uh, chocolate. Yeah, I mean... Uh, we sushi spoke, burritos. We spoke about gains. We spoke about sushi burritos. We spoke about hair, hair, um, hair events, coffee events. We spoke we, about you, dreams. You actually, you actually at one point invited me. You actually at one point told me that... Yeah. Um, you actually at one point said that um, there's a really cool coffee event that you was thinking about inviting me to... Oh, I said you uh, can go But it, you never actually invited me So that's quite <laughs> cool <laughs> It was more like anyone can go So you don't need it It's not my event So anyone can go I was just more like telling you That something was on No I think your exact words Were probably something like uh, Oh I was think I was I was going to invite you But then you ended that <laughs> that's, that's how it ended I was going to But I changed my mind yeah, That's what it sounded like You wanted to say There's a, there's a really cool coffee event In, uh, in May In uh, the Olympia So we should go I'm going to go with my team and it'd be great if you could come with me. Cause I've got someone who needs to hold my bag. So <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I'll think about it. May is a bit of a... May, oh, that sounds like I might be doing something. Really? Washing your beard. <laughs> what do you think it needs to wash? I hope, yeah, it should, you should wash it one time. I washed it like last. I washed it really, like yesterday. With be honest, game. was it yesterday? I'm sure it was yesterday. If it wasn't yesterday, I'm sure it was before. It's either yesterday. It was yesterday. I'm almost certain it was yesterday. I like shampoo and conditioned it. Uh, guys, our podcast today is brought to you, as always, by the same sponsors, uh, 5950NINE um, on Stanhope Road, 59 Stanhope Road in St. Albans in Hertfordshire. I, wallahi, when I say this, I love their coffee. Uh, I love their juices. Uh, I love their fresh food and snacks. So I, I'm not just saying this because they were one of our sponsors, but I really, and, that, and the owner is sitting next to me, but I really do love nine fresh juices, fresh snacks, uh, fresh coffee open every day. Um, that's it, every day. That's it. Make sure you check it out. Yeah. Uh, also, what you buy is Zaha. I love Zaha. I love Zaha. You can't just say that because I said I love Jordi. No, no. I love Zaha. Uh, yes. And you know I don't lie. And you don't lie. So Izaha.com, Sam loves it. So if Sam loves it, you should too. IZAHA.com. Use the code word freshly grounded to get 15% off Arabic style clothing. And lastly, by Flavor, F L A V R, um, branding, marketing. I love Flavor as well. I think it's fantastic what they do. Do you? Yeah. No, no, I'm they getting, did our logo. Doesn't surprise me. Everything they do is good. It's solid. It's yeah. strong. Strong, man. I really, really admire it. It's strong. Yeah, so any branding, marketing, mobile apps, websites, um, cam- marketing campaigns you need, go to flavor.co. Dot, sorry, flavor.co, F L A V R dot co. And let's get into episode number four. Sanko. S- uh, unos, dos, tres. Four. 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 Sam, you know I went to Brick Lane <laughs> this week. You went to Brick Lane? Uh, yeah, I don't normally go up those ends. Okay. Um, I took my wife. Uh, it's not very romantic, is it? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> face, face, what can we do to You know what? We're going Brick Lane. Um, That's a good spot. Yeah, it actually was really cool. So basically, I wanted to check out that serial killer cafe. Mm. Uh, did you know that they apparently they've opened one in Dubai now? Really? Yeah, there's one in Brick Lane, one in Camden, one in Dubai. I remember when they were like first in the press release yeah. of it. Yeah, I remember. Release, sorry. So it's like, I'm, if, correct me if I'm mistaken, but it's like two young guys, they thought, let's open up a cafe where we just do cereals from all around the world. Simple as that. Yeah, overpriced. What? Yeah, how much did you pay for a bottle of cereal? £4.90, I think, or £4.20. Is that literally that for the milk and the, cere- and the bottle of cereal? Yeah, but I mean, I they can, must I, be making a killing, bro. In like, it's rush. Oh, people are going there. Like, if you go to Brick Lane, there's like, rushes of people constantly there, just taking pictures of the outside and stuff. Yeah. Like, it's proper. But I say, I say, I say the price. But I would honestly say that um, that if I had that, oh, that's how much I would charge. That's not really overpriced. I thought you were going to say more than that. Yeah, no, it's not actually that much because, as in, obviously it sounds a lot because you think oh, I could buy a whole box of cereal, but. For the fact that you're going to the cafe, you get a bowl of cereal and that kind of stuff, like it actually is very, very reasonable price, I'd say. You'd expect I, I would expect it to be maybe six or seven quid. Yeah. 
I couldn't. I, it, some of the stuff looked amazing though. But what um, seal did you go for? <laughs> Bravo! You're going to have to, basically, yeah. I crave under. I I crave. I. You had crave. No, no, I didn't. Have crave. Crave. <laughs> <laughs> I crumble under pressure. Yeah. And so in my head, I'm like, all right. So basically, I saw on a menu that they had this one. A cereal that had like happy hippo in it yeah. so i was like oh happy hippo cereal <laughs> i love happy hippo so <laughs> so anyway yeah i'm like I, I, so because i didn't want to i know i can't be under pressure so i didn't want to get there and decide there yeah. so i checked the menu online before we left <laughs> and i was like yo i'm gonna get the happy hippo my wife was like cool i'm gonna get the cinnabon one yeah and that that, that looks so nice so anyway we get there she's like yeah cinnabon and then as we get there i realized that First of all, obviously, I, when before I looked, saw the menu, when I saw Happy Hippo cereal, I was a bit weirded out because I had never heard of that before. Yeah. So obviously, there was a few alarm bells ringing in my head, but I thought, obviously, this is a hipster <laughs> like cereal cafe. It's just something that they have in it. Got there. Obviously, there's no such thing as Happy Hippo, Hippo cereal. What it said on their menu is that they give you cereal and as a topping, they put a Happy Hippo on top. Right, okay. So now it's my turn right, to okay, order. Right. And there's a queue of people behind me. I'm bugging out because it's packed. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, one Cinnabon. And, she, and then and like, she was like, what? She's like, yeah, and, and what about you? And I was like looking around the shop because they have like all the cereals yeah. on the walls. I'm looking around. I'm like, um, and I just, I saw, bro. <laughs> Whoa, I saw crunching up clusters, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is like the basic thing that you can get in Sainsbury's. <laughs> so yeah, as you guys got and they had like peanut butter flavour. Yeah. And I like peanut butter. Yeah. So I was like, uh, is peanut butter crunchy nut clusters nice? And she was like, um, oh, I, I, don't, I don't like peanut butter, so I don't really know, to be honest. Uh, and then there's so many people behind me, I was like, okay, fine, I'll have that. Bro. <laughs> It came, yeah. First of all, and there's loads of different milks you can choose from. Yeah. So the, the premise of it is that there's small, medium and large bowl. Mm -hmm. You can mix uh, cereals together, which is, which is called like a cereal cocktail. Yeah. So you can get like, I don't know, Crunchy Nut with like um, uh, Captain Crunch or whatever, like, or like look, three different cereals. So we didn't do that. We just went for basic. I'm a simple guy. So we just got like one cereal. We got regular milk, semi-skimmed. But you can get like, you know, almond milk and like loads of different flavored milks and stuff. You can get toppings. So anyway... Um, it comes then, and like my wife got cinnamon, and it was so, hers was so nice. Yeah. yeah, it was amazing. And then mine, <laughs> like, bro, now I know why they don't sell crunchy nut clusters peanut butter flavor in actual shops. But it's just like, alhamdulillah, like, but <laughs> that's what I'm gonna say. What I'm gonna say is alhamdulillah. Yeah. So anyway, that's yeah, that's basically essentially it. We did you do I anything crumbled. else in Brooklyn? Yeah, man, it was amazing. So um. It, it, the, the vibe is just so cool because there's so many different types of people. Yeah. The stool, the food stool is really good. Sunday you went. Yeah, uh, or it Saturday. A Sunday. Sunday. It's a good day to go on a Sunday, life, man. Yeah. 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 Um, all the markets out. And stuff yeah, we well. went to the food market and we yeah. got really nice. Yeah, 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 it was yeah, like yeah. Uh, a lot of it was halal as well, yeah. so uh, we got really nice like um, uh, some sort of like South Asian food, like like Chinese or something. But really nice. nice. Um, and then um, there was like also this thing that looked amazing, but I just looked. I felt like I thought I love sushi, but yeah. I thought I'd be sick if I have this. It was a sushi burrito. Imagine like a burrito, like yeah. a wrap, and it's like got sushi inside. Full of raw fish. It. Yeah, so I was like, nah, nah, not me. Even though I love sushi, I was like, that's just a bit too much. Nah. And my life, my, my wife, my wife loves sushi. My wife loves sushi, but even then, for her, so yeah, she's got regular food. They've got a beautiful food market there, man. It's in, uh, in the in the Truman Brewery, isn't it? That's what I went to. Yeah. Um, I I, I discovered that when I was young. I went to uh, I went to Brick Lane as a, on a recommendation when I was about maybe eighteen years old. Eighteen years old. Yeah, went and got a um, a sea bass sandwich. From uh, from the food market, and it was a it was a revolution for me at the time. I was I was I was quite simple with my um, with my food choices, and discovered so many interesting places to get food in Brick Lane. It was it was incredible. So so one of my favourite places in London is to go to Brick Lane. You can spend the day up there. There's loads of good shops, loads of good places to to eat. And alhamdulillah, there's a really beautiful masjid right right in the centre of Brick Lane. I didn't see that. Whereabouts? So um, it's um, <laughs> <laughs> it's. Um, there's some nice shoes you got there, Lama Berlik. I'm the land, like like yours as well. Com I remember when we went. I remember when we went shopping. Com comfortable are they? Those I've shoes. I've worn them in now. Oh, have you? Yeah. You were complaining about those shoes last week. I've got about six pairs of socks covered in blood. Really? But like, well, like, like you were saying about how you were going to sell them. Looks like you didn't sell them then. I wonder how you keep them so clean. I I um I've cleaned them when I've got in. and I've just wiped them. Really? Yeah, yours are nice as well. I remember actually the day we went. You took me shopping. You uh, we went up and down, up and down Oxford uh, Oxford Street. <laughs> in the hunt for you for you we had a very particular trainer in mind it was exhausting but alhamdulillah i'm glad you found it i think we also went to three different uh stores that you wanted to go to as well stony 
Yeah, which um, is still known as Tuzumi. But the mustard in Brick Lane <laughs> is um, literally just next. Well, to be honest, it's next to the Truman Brewery where you would have gone. Okay. Um, and I only discovered it. We um, uh, men's bar. We had a uh, pop up shop in Brick Lane um, last year. Alhamdulillah, we were there for three three days. There was like a, um, a fashion magazine, basically hosted uh, a a pop up for. There's loads of different clothing brands, um, and then obviously we were the barbers there. And we, we discovered that there was a mashed literally just a stone's throw from where we were. So it was beautiful. For, we were there all weekend and making us all our all jamats in the, in the mashed as well. Oh, no, that's awesome. um, and there's loads of amazing coffee shops there as well. Yeah. There's one that specializes in chocolate. Um, Bro. Do you see it? In, that's, that's right next door to Siwa Kula Cafe. And that's right next door to the masjid. Really? Yeah. Oh. Or just, just up, just literally next door. That up, looked up. amazing. Yeah. So like all that, that really inspired me because it's all everything's wood and there's all the chocolates out and they have loads of chocolate you can, can sample. Um... Yeah, I went up there with a sweet tooth and enjoyed a lot of chocolate there. So yeah, Brit Lane is good, man. Really, really good. I've got a lot of fond memories in Brit Lane. That chocolate shop, um, we were actually going to go there for my coffee after. Because um, I said one thing I said to my wife, I said that if we're going there, I really want to try like a nice independent small coffee shop because mm. like, I love the vibe of those places. What's your favourite? Uh, what, independent small in the coffee shop? Oh, there's one called 59 on Stanhope Road in St Albans. Great coffee. Um <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so we th- we had the cereal at Cereal Killer, yeah. and then that really like fulfilled my sweet tooth. So I, I really wasn't fancy no. a chocolate like on top of a coffee. So, bro, imagine this year we're in Brick Lane. The one thing I've been saying to my wife since we got there is I really want to go to a nice coffee shop, nice small independent coffee shop. Guess where we ended up getting my coffee in the end? Co- Starbucks, Costa. <laughs> it's typical of you, though, isn't I it? I know. I know. It's typical of you. I had all of my intentions for Brick Lane. I like, basically. I mean, I went for a really cool, like, crazy, amazing cereal. Ended up getting crunchy nut clusters. Uh, I went for a really nice, cool, hipster coffee. Ended up going Costa. Um, Did you get to go to any shops in Britain? Yeah, oh, bro. Right, so we went to this one... It's, I don't want to say shop, but it's like a it's like a warehouse mm. where they have like secondhand stuff. Like a bunch, It looks so cool, bro. Went in there. Beyond, beyond retro. Yeah, uh, I don't know what it's called. Bro, I went in there and it's got like, you know, uh, old street signs and, and just the coolest stuff, yeah. Leave and then the next day I come to office and I'm I'm thinking about how like I really want to like spruce up the freshly grounded set. I was thinking, because I was watching one of my episodes, I thought oh, it looks a bit, um, th- I love the set, but I thought maybe it looks a bit plain. Like maybe it'd be cool if we had like, like cool stuff like around the table and stuff as well. And I thought to myself, oh my days, that was a perfect store. Like, imagine we had like the, you know, like a stop sign, like the road stop sign, stuff like that, like in the background, like just really cool stuff like that. Uh, but alhamdulillah, I think, I think that'd be better for like, if inshallah, eventually we ever get a permanent, Yeah, yeah. Uh, if we get a permanent studio, then we can like leave it there. So It'd be so much hassle to so like... So you want a stop sign? No, no, it's just a stop sign, but like just cool stuff like... like when you say cool, cool stuff... You know, it's cool, isn't it? Like, stop, cool. That's so cool. So one day in Brick Lane, you turn into a hipster. Bro, uh, let me just say this. Wallahi, went into Brick Lane with my accent. Walked out with a proper Eastern accent. You haven't got an Eastern accent. No, but obviously now I don't because I'm back. Just for that day. Just for, just for like that half an hour. So you must have heard one guy speak. I was just trying to make my wife laugh. It was funny. I was like, I was all my... Oh, yeah, she was trying to do it. Yeah, yeah. She was like, all, she was like, all of your coffee in your, in your Eastern accent. And I was like, I was like... Um, I was like, oh, right, can I get one latte for me, please? <laughs> it's so funny. It's just, I, felt, I felt like I sounded like Barry from um, Full Lions. Do you know Barry? Yeah. Yeah, I felt, I felt like I sounded like Barry. So, Mashallah. Went Brick Lane, that was really cool. Good. How was your week? You went to Manchester. So I was in Manchester for the weekend, yeah. Fancy? Eh? Is it Porsche? fancy? No, <laughs> going, <laughs> going up north for the weekend. Uh, yeah, well, alhamdulillah, was it was good, man. We went early Sunday morning. Got back very late Monday night. We went. Um, we were on stage for the weekend. Um, we were. Um, Saw a picture of you on stage. It was. I felt like a proud father. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, it was good. Alhamdulillah, good. I. Um, yeah, we we originally um, it was a big hair event. And we originally were supposed to have a a stand up there, and we backed out last minute, which I was uh, I was actually very happy about because it wasn't as big as previous years we've been. Um, and it would have cost us a fortune. So, alhamdulillah, it was a, it was a blessing that we didn't put too much money into it. What, so, what do you do as Stan? Sorry. Okay, so we were we had like, for this for this uh, particular hair show, we had a stand in London Olympia when they did the one in London uh, this last year, and we had a stand. So we had all our clothes that we sell, 
We had all our education information, so people who want to jump on courses. We had all our scissors for sale, all our equipment that we sell. And then we also had a, um, we had like two barber chairs, so we were doing demonstrations and stuff. Because obviously what we, we promote um, education, so we have obviously our academy where people can do like uh, week courses, day courses and stuff. So watching us cut hair, get information about how to book into courses, buying our scissors, our razors, etc. So that's what we have a stand okay. for. So we were going to do it for Manchester and it didn't feel, it didn't feel totally right uh, for myself and Josh. We, we decided it wasn't the right time and alhamdulillah it was a blessing because it wasn't busy enough. It would have been throwing money down the drain. Yeah. So I walked around at this place, me and Mahi went through, I just went and scoped out what was going on. It was just, it wasn't as, wasn't as uh, buzzing as usual. It was still busy, alhamdulillah, but it was, um, I'm glad we didn't, we didn't pump loads of money into it basically, but it was nice to be there. It was were, you, nice. were you cutting hair? Like, yeah, yeah, I did a little, hair, bit, a little bit of hair cutting. It was more um, just promoting the boys, promoting the education. Um, it was like three times we were on stage. Um, oh, sweet. For me, bro, like I'll be totally honest. Like my my, I used to have a huge passion for um, hairdressing and barbering, and I used to try and do everything. I've been on a stage many times through my career of like eleven years, but now my um, my passion. I won't say it's it's faded, but I have a passion as I've kind of spread it into different areas. So for me, it's it's a business thing now. It so, comes. It really comes across as well when yeah. you um, just on your just by being around you and seeing your posts and stuff. Yeah. It does come across. So, like, I mean, I've I've been doing it for a long time, <clears throat> and um, alhamdulillah, I love I love my shop and I love my brand so so much. But I don't love being in the salon cutting hair full time. I don't love being on stage demonstrating haircuts anymore. I used to, and now I have like I have my passions that I, and I'm sort of veering off in different directions. I, I love like our new coffee shop. Mm. So for me, I just book tickets to. We've got a um. There's a big um coffee expedition at the olympia really which i was going to invite you to um and obviously that's it's the same it's the equivalent for the coffee industry as the hairdressing industry it's the equivalent of what i've just come from okay. so loads of people with their stands and those people kind of selling what their trade there what they do that sounds really cool so it's at the olympia um and that for me as i'm looking for the information that's now what makes me buzz and now that's what i'm my goals are okay i'm gonna go this year i'm gonna scope it out i'm gonna get inspired by it then inshallah next year 59 will be there inshallah do you know what i mean so yeah. this is now now this is what i can feel naturally like I'm kind of, I'm still, I'm still in heavily involved in men's bar, obviously, but I want to push in other directions. Do you know what I mean? Follow my passion. That's good, man. It's, it's about growth, isn't it? Really, like growth. you, you can't. Uh, if you wanna, it's, it, you don't want to just like be um, stagnant in your career For or sure. in your options. Like if you're, if you, if you're expanding them and you're growing, that's that's <clears> amazing. And if you're creating your own like uh, options, that's even that's even more amazing. Yeah, for They're, like, sure. For you, man. I mean. But can I also just say that I really love your top? Where That's really it? kind of you to say. I, I've not seen this one before. This is new. Where is it from? Manchester. Oh, really? You don't want to know what brand it is, though. Can you just show me the label? You'll recognise it from when we, we went to one of the shops when oh. we went shopping. Remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what, did you go specifically? Did you know that there was a store? they had a store in Manchester? You went specifically? I just went shopping and found it. And I really like it. I love it. And it's um, it's two sizes smaller than my usual size. So I'm the little size. This size looks really good on you. you yeah. look, you're looking big in it. In it. Pardon? You're looking big in it. I'm looking big, brother. No, 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 okay, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, so Manchester was cool. Manchester was cool. What did I do this week? Um, uh, I don't think I did much this week. I literally been in the office every day. Gym every day? Uh, no, I've, uh, no, no. I saw a healthy mindset on uh, Lats's uh, story that you were doing some pretty heavy oh. squats. Bro, this is what we did this week. What? All right, so there's this, n- there's this new private gym that's open in central London. I'll give me two seconds. Sorry, bro. Oh, in the next break, I'm really going to need to blow my nose. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, so anyway, there was this gym, uh, this private gym that's opened in London, and I didn't understand what that meant, private gym. But what it means, yeah, is that, first of all, membership is £180 a month, yeah? But you can't just sign up to the gym. You have to fill out a form online to show interest in signing up, and they call you, and then I don't know what happens, maybe they interview you or something, and then if, you, if they're happy, then you can get membership. It's mad. That is... That's amazing, bro. Man. It's insane, bro. That's amazing. The gym is a it's a boxing team gym. Yeah, stunning. Really, like it's so basically. Is that is it is it that where you got that picture of the three of you? Yes. I was gonna say, is that your usual? I didn't know if that was your normal tr- no, gym. No, no, you no. Train if that was our gym. anyway. So basically, you know, because that's his team, Anthony Joshua. Yeah. Um, and that gym has is one of Anthony Joshua's sponsors, and so all of Team Anthony Joshua are allowed in for free. Right. And so you could say that I'm Team Anthony Joshua. Could you? Um, 
I mean, you could say that I was know with, someone who's yeah. in team managing just yeah. now. Mashallah. But there's two. In two your, if you're honest, in your head, do you feel like you're team managing <laughs> just now? Just be honest. Just be, just be honest. Just be, all of of course not. Of course. Be honest. Not. <laughs> of course not. Of course not. But but <laughs> uh, but we, uh, have you noticed everyone in team managing just is really hench? Yeah. yeah. That's why I thought I assumed yeah, no, that you no, might have been in the no, team no, as well. No, no. Uh, you so know, what do you mean, Stavro? No, I'm not. Can I'm, I just say? Can I just say? I know you hate no, it. No, I don't want you to say it. Right. So anyway, we went with two guys. Wait, listen, thing. I can't tell you this story. Yeah, gym. please go on, so go we on. Went, so we went with two guys. So, uh, so it was me, Ajmal Lats, and then one of the other guys from TMF Joshua was there called yep. Skins. Yep. And we all trained together. Yep. And bro, like, it's like a five million pound gym. And it's like, but it's actually nice and small. So, um, it, and so like, because it's a private gym, it really wasn't packed at all and so you could read your proper nice workout with state-of-the-art equipment um it's one of those gyms that has you know like those tires and the sledgehammers yeah, 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 and yeah. a really like amazing blacked out boxing ring punch bags it looked beautiful from the picture it was saw, just studied man and so we had such a good session there beautiful is that something you're gonna make do it regularly there or well the guy who like i don't know one of the managers or whatever but one of the dudes basically because we got in for free because of yeah. uh, lads we were in their training and at one point one guy like he has like coach written on his t-shirt and he's got like the 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 logo of the gym on the back of the t-shirt so he works there and he goes why all you guys are bids out of here now is it I, yeah we were like what and like and then he and then he was like it was a typical movie moment where like someone says something and they're like ah oh, is it? <laughs> yeah and he started laughing right and then we were like laughing with him like no one knows who he is even like <laughs> so we like, oh. and he was like oh you guys man like he was like you're welcome here whenever every day come here like chatting to yeah. us like, so i think i'm just becoming the member of a new energy but i i wow i wouldn't roll in there because could you roll all, in there if you were black. by what he um, said, probably by wow. myself, but I would want to go a few more times with lats so that they yeah, know yeah, my yeah, face. Yeah, yeah. Um, wow, what opportunity, man! Bo, a yeah, proper opportunity uh, to grab by the how, horns, by the horns. How much Allah gives you, bro? That's so, so Bo, such it's a, a blessing, blessing man. A blessing for so you, you have to record. You have to sign up to request to request to be a gym, Insane. and you're allowed in there. To train, but even the, the fact you train there once, that's beautiful. Bro, the tra the changing rooms, the sauna, the um, steam, everything like state of the art. And guess what they have inside there? What? Like inside the gym, they have a Joe and the Juice. Really? Joe and the Juice have a actual like they have basically the gym has a lounge. Yeah. Area, like, but you would love it, bro. I'm, I I know the kind of stuff you'd like. Yeah. You'd love this gym because it's like it's like because you like stuff that looks like very appealing to the yeah, eye yeah, yeah. and very like. Beautifully set out and bro, even the joint juice there, it's not like regular joint juice, it's like the sofas and like it's just so like prestige. Did it inspire you, bro? It really inspired me, yeah, man. Wow, and um, yeah, man. If uh, if you know, I if I'm able to in the future, I'll bring you down, you know, inshallah. <laughs> inshallah. Do you have one of those um t shirts? The, the yeah, Joshua and Joshua t shirts, <laughs> no, but one time I wore the t well, that's his t Joshua hat and I felt like I was in t Joshua. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but for Not the sure record, that. I don't. I personally don't. Um, uh, I don't uh, approve or condone. Not approve or condone because that sounds like I hate it. But like, I don't uh, necessarily agree with boxing. Like the whole the whole idea of like punching in the face. Like, oh, the, the training, sport. the training yeah. aspect of it is incredible. Oh, though, I'm man. I'm obsessed with that. Like yeah. the whole like the hard work ethic, mm. the 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 the, co the culture of yeah, yeah, boxing, yeah, yeah, yeah. the culture of boxing gyms. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. Just the art of like punching someone else in the face for sport. Yeah. Obviously, Islamically, I'm against that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But but like I would happily say that like the, the training regimen and all that. Oh, I love incredible. that. Incredible. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I agree. That, I agree. Yeah, even Ajmal was in the boxing ring, like just shadow boxing, like for yeah. a joke or something. And he's just like the whole like, I don't know, man. Have you like just the kind of, I don't know, the culture and the vibe of it just is cool, isn't it? Yeah, it's amazing. I watched um, I watched something the other day called The Governor. Have you seen The Governor on yeah. uh, Netflix? It's about um, oh, my mind's gone. I shouldn't have brought that up. I've totally forgotten who it's about. It's about um, Lenny. Um, oh, Lennox Lewis. No, um, Lenny. <laughs> Forgotten his name, man. Like the Brit Britain's the hardest man. But it was about his like his training. He used to do like bare knuckle boxing, really, and then he got into it. Yeah, but oh, you don't mean Charles Bronson? No, I don't mean Charles Bronson. I mean um, Lenny. Oh, oh Kravitz. Name. No, that's a, a musician. Is it? Why did that even come to my head? It'll, come, like, to, it'll come to my head. I've never heard. I've never ever mean, like, like thought of that person in my life. I just <laughs> Lenny, Kravitz, Lenny right? Kravitz is a black guitarist. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> Lenny, I want to say it's not. I want to say that McQueen is something McQueen. But um, why why it was interesting was just watching his training because he's old old school old school boxing. Watching his training was just like brutal, but really? like so effective. Yeah, so it was uh, it was inspiring to watch as someone who's getting into training. Training but for what was he a boxer? He was a boxer, yeah. Oh, okay. But like old school, so like just like used to train in like warehouses and just like and just doing 
Just brutal, brutal training. Something more cool about the vibe, isn't it? Yeah. What's his name? Lenny. Not Kravitz, no. <laughs> <laughs> what else have you got up to this week, bro? Man, do you know what? My week, other than like, I literally office and gym. I put out a video this week, uh, which I was really, I was really upset about putting this video out because I wanted to have a haircut before I put the video, video out, but just my timings weren't really what working out. What video was that? Sorry. What video? I put was out a video that? about like me. I had a really unproductive day at the office the other day, and so I made a video about being unproductive, and my video ended up being really unproductive as well. Really? Uh, but yeah, it was quite a humorous video. Lenny McLean. Yeah, yeah, unproductive. No, thank you. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, wow, he does look hard, doesn't he? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh it was like a, um, it was a doorman and like a, a, a boxer for a long time. Oh wow, he's hench. Yeah, yeah, bro. But he's in actually in like the, he's in like the, um, the he's in like um, snatch and stuff as an actor. Oh, but really? He was like he was like uh, the real deal. But he's he, his um, I watched his uh, documentary. But his son, his son, he led his documentary. It's just like I said, the reason it was interesting was because of the training he used to do. And we were talking about training as a boxer. Like yeah. the fitness is just it's mad, isn't it? Well, it's insane. And you know what, bro? The, that's what's mad is that there's um like we hear all of these stories about like these underground like um um like gang like like gangster when i say gangsters i mean like proper like old school gangsters yeah, yeah. like the cray twins and like lenny kravitz and that kind of stuff <laughs> <laughs> lenny kravitz. um and lenny mclean and, stuff. And, and then you think like it's th- that stuff probably still exists like of course like of course. in our culture but it's just like like you know now it probably exists more than ever because it's easier to hide, I suppose, because everyone's posting on social media. I oh, know I don't know what I'm getting at. That's completely wrong. It's not. There's easy There's a to lot hide. of. There's a. There's still a lot. Of course, there is. There's, there's the, a lot of gang culture. Crime. Of course, there is. Yeah. yeah organized crime. Yeah, organized crime. Yeah, of course there is. Yeah. I studied oh, organized crime you, actually. Did you? Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. I don't know anything about it. Uh, just uh, studied to get the pass the exam. Are you glad you went to university? Uh, I am. I am because. Uh, of the life experiences it took me. I went to university as a uh, not very practicing um, yeah. uh, Muslim with like wrong intentions and stuff. And I came out, alhamdulillah. Uh, so you found your Islam when I you found were my Islam at uni, yeah. university. So yeah. alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So, I mean, I'm so take, that, I'm take that out of the equation for a second. The actual being at university and studying, educating yourself. The education stuff, no, not at all. Okay. No, but everything, everything else, I'm so happy. Like the fact that I live by myself in a different... It's technically country because yeah. Wales is a different country. Um, yeah. <laughs> living in a different city for sure. Yeah. Um, I learned so much, like about basic stuff that, but it sounds stupid, but even stuff like constantly making sure you eat and stuff, like ain't no one, <laughs> like food's not cooked for you. You have yeah, to cook true. your own food. You have to do your own food shopping. So you basically, you have you to w- do your own washing. So you learned that you actually do have to eat you have to eat. Yeah, well, uh, I learned independence. Like, eat clean. I know what you mean, though. You have <laughs> I, to prepare I know I your breakfast, always. you have to prepare your lunch, you have to prepare yeah. your dinner, and you have to make sure it's healthy, and obviously you're on a budget as well. So on a budget, yeah. you, and, and cl- like, make sure your clothes are clean, like, uh, make sure your bed sheets have been changed. But like, sometimes, like, I would be like, oh, like, damn, I haven't washed my clothes in like a week. I don't have any clothes to wear. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And then. It's good for life skills. Yeah, proper. Because um, we had, uh, I was doing some filming yesterday, and uh, one of the topics that we were talking about was education. Oh, really? And for education for me, bro, I left I left school at fifteen, so even before you sh- you should leave, um, and I didn't really I didn't really benefit from school. In fact, I have quite bad memories of school. We we basically posed the question: if you could go back and do it again, would you do it differently? And obviously, I would. And what I said I'd do, I would like to go back and just do maths again, and maybe just a little bit of English again. But everything else, I feel like I could I could leave I could leave off. Um, Maybe maybe learn a language. If I had the opportunity to have free education, maybe learn a language. But um, we were talking about like school. We weren't criticizing the education system. But I will actually, to be fair, I was criticizing yeah. the education system. But I think things have changed since then. Even when I left, a few years after, they were introducing that you could leave. So you're still at school, but you leave for some days and you'd get do like more hands-on, like apprenticeship, apprenticeship style stuff. So people could go and learn how to be a mechanic. Some people go to like hair college and you could do like, you could do more hands-on mm-hmm. things. And that would have been such a benefit to me because I really struggled for being in a classroom um, and I got kicked out loads of my, my classes and stuff. I was just like a distraction to people. But like, um, understand that everyone is like, uh, every, every, everyone is so different and it takes, I think it takes wisdom to teach someone. So it's nice that now they have obviously procedures in place that you can actually go and do hands-on stuff. Because for me, like being at school was a waste of time. Like, I, didn't be- I didn't benefit or gain anything. Um, and if I could have been taken out for a few days to like learn something more hands-on and be more practical would have been such more of a benefit for me. 
Yeah, I think that like education is important in the sense that like not only maths and English, but like I think your primary school and high school I think are very important. Yeah. Because like for me, if I'm honest, <coughs> I have actually learned like uh, I remember some of my stuff that I learned like history, and I think it has benefited me in the sense that like I will remember like when I see like the stuff like going on in the news and stuff, it does benefit me like le- having learned about stuff like World War Two and that kind of. And it sounds like a worry that benefit you, but it, it has. So I say like history important. Re was important because I learned the basics of other faiths. Mm-hmm. Science was important because I learned basics. So I would say like all of high school was was beneficial and primary school. Mm. I think after primary school and high school, I think that's when the benefit I I believe has stops. Unless you want to do something like be a lawyer or a doctor or something, obviously yeah. you have to study. Yeah. But I think I've now become big on something that you, I can definitely see that you're big on, and that's like self education. Yeah. You seem very big on self education. Yeah, for and sure. I think the good thing about that is that you can cater your education to yourself. Like, what is it that I want to learn? And then you can read about it. You can like look about it. You do a lot of self education, don't you? Sir? I think things that um, are relevant to you. It's the thing when you self education, you can obviously you can pick your topics, and you can obviously pick if you're if you're dealing with something in life, or you're about to go down a certain path in life, you can educate yourself on that. So. Um, it's something I wish I did more of, to be honest. And after after yesterday talking about it, it made me go back and actually think. You know, the main thing I took from it is that rah, I need to get stop my Arabic, my learning my Arabic right. properly because, as Muslims, Alhamdulillah, we 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 need to learn, we need to learn Arabic. We need to be able to <coughs> read it and write it because um, the benefit of the of the, <coughs> of the Quran, Allah's book, to get the benefit from it, we need to be able to read it. Do you know what I mean? So. When I when I first became Muslim, like le- telling, realizing that I had to learn Arabic was very intimidating. Alhamdulillah, I've done a, I've done a little bit, but I realistically should be doing so much more. Um, so it was it was a reminder yesterday talking about education and self education, and also the the whole you know the the the, the famous phase uh, not phase the yeah, famous phase that's me. <laughs> okay. the famous um, phrase okay. of knowledge is power, and it right. really is, man. Like when you when you when you learn more, you, it's self elevation. You can like. You you learn more whatever the top the topic is. It's only only going to benefit yourself. Um, so yeah, there's almost I almost felt like after yesterday reflecting upon I need to. There's a few things that I need to self educate myself on. A hundred percent, man, bro. Th- uh, on that topic, I uh, I you know that lecture series that I told you that I've been going through. Yeah. Um, I've bro. Honestly, bro. Like I can't. I with I, I like with in, in, in no arrogance or anything like in any way but alhamdulillah bro like i've been i've been learning so much through that series like every day i'm learning new things like changing things to try and better myself Mm. and like bro the thing is yeah you can say that oh that's because like i've like decided to like listen to the series and stuff but really truly it's all from allah because if allah didn't want me to listen to that yeah if allah Allah didn't want me to get educated on that thing like i i wouldn't have because like if like like remember when we bro there's something issue with my mic i need to fix that hold on okay so basically um I remember we were like one time like you said something like about how like sometimes you see like a quote an Islamic quote and you think oh that really like relates to me yeah. and then you realise that it's not a coincidence because every like you're meant to see that because everything is controlled by Allah yeah. and so like the fact that Allah has allowed me to like listen to this well, first of all I want to say that we should always keep making dua, dua. there's this one dua that goes um, Rabbi Zidni Ilma and that means uh, oh Lord increase me in knowledge yeah. and bro like I've tried since I heard that I've tried to make that dua, dua and this and I think like like di- like it's he's working alhamdulillah but anyway like my knowledge is really weak bro yeah. but i'm saying like in this this particular thing like it's it's been like every day i'm learning something new if it, even if it's something really small yeah and one thing that i learned as well which like kind of related to me is that but first of all, we always have to check ourselves yeah but oh, for flip's sake man this mic you know what let's cut this now and then let me fix the mic and let's cut, jump back on thanks red um yeah so the one thing i learned anyway is basically by I I've been by learning some stuff in this series. Like I might learn like words and stuff here and there, and then like I'll find myself using them words and stuff with like friends and family. Like in, an example would be something like if like for example what I told you today. I said something like um I said, bro, um in Islam we're not allowed to have kibur. Yeah, which yeah. is what I heard in the lecture today. Yeah, now. That's like a small example of it, but like, let's say if I keep like, learning like things here and there, and I say stuff like, um, just for the viewers who don't, um, listeners who don't um, know what that means, would you just what yeah, is that? Uh, I like arrogance. Okay. So anyway, my point is that in one of the lectures, he spoke about um, people who say things that other that they know that other people like uh, that are a bit like confusing and stuff. 
like just because they want to show yeah, yeah, that yeah. they know things yeah. and about how that's like completely wrong. Mm-hmm. So he says, for so he says, for it's, an example would be if someone like no, if someone goes to do like a uh, khutbah and they know the type of people they're going to do khutbah to, and then they just make the khutbah really confusing and real because they just want to show like look yeah, how much yeah, knowledge I have. Yeah. That's like a really dangerous thing as well. Yeah. So there's so many dangers in knowledge, and that's why there's a du'a that says like, oh, like give me knowledge that's beneficial to me, and like and, so that, and we have to always like ask God to keep us humble even with our knowledge because like we can get gassed off it a bit and really truly bro like we're not even like i don't have knowledge like uh, uh, like i really i'm really low on knowledge and so for for so those lectures are so beneficial to me to like correct me in like the stuff i think and stuff i say um it yeah that's it's just like yeah the the importance of gaining knowledge man isn't it because Mm -hmm. also if you have knowledge you know that you have no knowledge if that makes sense yeah like like you say that like I have a small, such a small amount of knowledge. That's 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 it. When you have when you understand that you have when you have knowledge, you know that you actually have literally a drop in the ocean of knowledge. It's insane. Yeah, it's man. insane. And the other thing that really hit me today is when we were driving up. Is you said something. Thanks, bro. You said something about um. You said like, and even you just said it now about how you guys you and Josh felt about like not feeling right with yeah. that store. And then there was something else you said in the car when we were driving up about not feeling right. Yeah. And I was saying that it's so beautiful that Allah has put a fitra inside us so that we get these feelings that sometimes we can't explain. Yeah, but yeah, a lot of the times sure. that's just our fitra. Like we just know something's right or wrong. Yeah. Um, obviously there's loads of different things it could be like sometimes we could get worse worse and like we got to ignore when something when it's shaitan trying to like make us feel guilty about things. But generally like the reason Allah has given us a like one of the reasons Allah has given us a fitra is so like we have this like for the for like like this what is it an, an innate disposition yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah just yeah. this feeling that you can't explain yeah 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 and so I think the fitra is such a beautiful thing man for sure you can just I think it's just a, it's a kind of a monitor you know what 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 feels right and what doesn't feel right and people will say you should follow your heart and you should whether it feels right that's what it is it's your fitra isn't it so when you do something and it doesn't feel one hundred percent right and it kind of makes you feel like i i said it kind of it gave me a feeling of like slight anxiety mm. where other things i do can make me feel like content and like not that i'm proud of it but alhamdulillah like feel feel right so you should always listen to your you should always listen to that but obviously, yeah. obviously at the same time shaitan can get mixed up in that and uh and it, but, yeah you gotta be able to defend yeah yeah it's, you have to have like a like yeah the concept of shaitan is like a, such a crazy concept because it's like yeah you have to you have to always be wary of shaitan mm. and like know that he can try and like make her, like try and affect our thoughts try and affect our worship and stuff like that what are you laughing at <laughs> nothing I was, I thought I was is like, it because red opened up a can of <laughs> sprite under his jacket <laughs> 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 no, it's fine enjoy what is that oh one of my favorite drinks. red you're mic'd up now for the no, first no, for the first time how do you feel being mic'd up he's not mic'd up yet uh. No, no, I am mic'd up. I just have to, you know, the gain's got to be up. Oh, but gains. Yeah, yeah, the gains. He's making his It feels quite official, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it feels quite surreal. I'm not it, was, it was a request that I did. I did make, thinking I think you deserve. Well, I know, you, obviously, you're, 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 you're not going to talk the whole time, but I do feel like you deserve to have that mic. Oh, thank you, Sam. Yeah. That's so I'm really happy. You. Your wife you mentioned it already, did she? Yeah. 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 There you got to Make sure Red gets a mic. <laughs> oh, thank <laughs> you. Thank make you sure he gets a mic. <laughs> <laughs> Alhamdulillah, she's, he's, he's yeah. Right. Alhamdulillah. It's true though because like even when you do like when we do the current events and stuff, it's it's nice for you for this to be proper. Yeah, current event. It's nice for you to have like proper mic'd up system. So yeah, apart yeah, from yeah. when we have guests, when we have guests, unfortunately we have to go back to yeah. Then I just Inshallah, to, you know. Yeah. What were we talking about before? We were talking about our fitra and we were talking about shaitan. Yeah, I was essentially saying that we it's, it's, you got to be careful because you got to somewhat you got to realize that shaitan's there, yeah. but then at the same time you can't always think about it and let it affect your like what you're thinking as well. It's, it's, it's all about balance, isn't it? It's, uh, it's about having that like. It makes um, you go a bit crazy otherwise. Oh, yeah. you, I had this. We, this came up in discussion uh, yesterday about we're talking about anxiety and depression. Oh, again, uh, you did that one that other time you were filming as well. Did we? Yeah. It wasn't a, it wasn't a main subject. We did depression as a, oh, main, really? as a main subject. Oh, awesome, yeah. man. Awesome. And it was interesting because we had um, a non-Muslim talking about it as well. And he was basically saying, you know, and Allah knows best whether depression was a, is a medical disease that, you know, and he was comparing it to like cancer and and uh, and other physical and diabetes and physical diseases that, you know, right, right, that right. you could maybe get a scan for and you could, and that, that will show up. He right. was comparing depression as, as the equivalent of, of that. And my argument, not my argument, but my my point was, 
it's more of a, a I would say describe it as a spiritual disease in the sense I'm not saying that if you've got depression as a Muslim you got you got a spiritual disease but we know that if you implement the religion of Islam and you have a a connection with our Creator Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and you and you do it correctly you should have that sakina that tranquility right, right. and we shouldn't as Muslims be anxious and depressed and nervous we should we yeah. should have full full trust in the color of Allah and it's easy me saying that because obviously a lot of Muslims do suffer from depression and anxiety right. and stuff and I'm not yeah. saying it's a, a fault in their religion or anything like that but we I was just saying I wonder how many non-Muslims that do suffer from depression whether they Mela guide them and if they found their 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 purpose and they they implemented their purpose of why they're actually here in this world would they still have that depression that's a very good question that's a very good question because we know Allah did, did not create mankind and jinn kind but to worship him right so if we're not doing that we're not fulfilling our purpose how you, how is it how is it how is it going to work it goes how, against our fitra doesn't it goes it? against our fitra so you're, you're always going to have that void you're always going to have that thing missing so my argument was imagine if these people implemented the deen of islam may I, like i said may Allah guide them because the guidance mm -hmm. is with allah um but whether they they filled that void and had that connection and they start worshiping their lord like how they're supposed to it's like that t-shirt you you don't that think that you didn't buy that t-shirt just to have you got it to wear mm. so that that's the purpose of the t-shirt likewise with your trainers you got the trainers didn't buy them just they're not just sitting there doing nothing you have them to wear on your feet of course they're, they're fulfilling the purpose yeah. to it so <laughs> it's the same as yourself if you're not fulfilling your purpose of being here and i know that for for myself like when i'm Alhamdulillah, I'm, I'm, I pray five times a day, etc. But there's so much more that I could do. And when I do more for the sake of Allah, and I do more involve my religion, I feel so much better. And it's almost like the dunya worries and the dunya issues kind of get put to one side. And, and really, I find so much contentment because I'm actually doing what I was created to do. Yeah. Likewise, when I take a step back, not that I take a step back from away from my religion, but obviously I'm occupied by dunya and I'm doing so much stuff which maybe isn't necessarily ibadah and worship. I don't feel so. I haven't got that sort of peace and tranquility. I'm actually like more stressed and and do you know what I mean. So this is it, man. If imagine if we live, we could just live a life of of just just. I mean, when I went to do Umrah in Saudi Arabia, when you're in Makkah and we were in Medina, you ain't not thinking about dunya at all. Right, right, you're right. literally just thinking about building your connection with your Lord, and you're preparing, and all you're thinking about is hereafter because you're you're out of the dunya and you're actually in you're in a blessed land and that you're just there worshiping. Now that feeling is just undescribable and I thought if I could implement that in my life throughout would just <coughs> would be a wonderful thing but obviously at the same time there needs to be a balance of dunya and 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 Dean so I'm just I'm just saying if if we could uh, maybe we could eradicate depression by more people fulfilling their purpose potentially the point yeah no it's definitely a good point Do you know what I mean yeah I think the the other thing you said about like dunya Dean is um this other thing that I was listening to when I was um listen to his lecture is that you know we often say now i don't want to i'm not i'm definitely not giving a fatwa or anything like that but you know when we say um i don't know if you, you, you i'm not i'm not saying that everyone says it but i know that some people will, will say um some of us will say like oh i am doing this for my dean and but then when we go to work with like, our this is for my dunya do you know what i'm saying like mm -hmm. do you get what i'm saying like like you, like we say we sometimes might say like um I'm doing this for my dunya to keep my dunya up, but like obviously, like you have to have like dunya and deen. Uh, essentially, what the lecture was about was about how we should nothing should be like necessarily for dunya, True. but like like so for, for ex so basically, what we're saying is that like like if you're doing something for the, everything should be for the sake of Allah, essentially, yeah? yeah, everything should be for the sake of Allah. Now, even he, I might have misheard or, or something, so I don't want to say this deal, but what I was listening to is he said that even if and it makes sense. He said, even if you do something for the sake of Allah, but then a little bit for dunya, like you're no longer doing it solely for the sake of Allah anymore. So let's say if I was to like sell my Izaha hats and I'm like, okay, I'm doing it for the sake of Allah because I want to like, um, you know, uh, do it for the sake of Allah. Like I want to like build a, yeah. my, I want to uh, provide for my family yeah. for the sake of Allah because like, I think this is my means of doing income, it. Yeah. Halal income. For the sake of our success. But a little bit of it is because I want to obviously increase my dunya and you know it'd be nice to have a nice car, a nice house. Yeah. Now, that little bit of me doing it for dunya, like, does that add like some I'm not asking you as well because I know we're not knowledgeable, but I'm just saying like this is what I was into, is that like it should be completely for the sake of Allah. So like like I'm it should be like, you know, I'm doing this business like if if i'm doing it to provide for my family then yeah, i need to make it for the sake of allah it just goes back to what we're saying like every week basically about constantly renewing our intentions yeah. doesn't it 
for sure. Because everything can be for the sake like every little thing we do can be for Everything is for the sake of Allah. Everything is. And like, we should make that intention of everything. So that even when, on the way to work, you make your intention to go to work for the sake of Allah. There's it's, it classes Ibadah, yeah? Right. So there is worship. At the same time, how, I'm, and I'm not getting no fatwa, not speaking without knowledge, but I understand that I have to live in dunya and I have to make sure that when I'm in dunya, things can be as nice for me and my family as possible. Yeah, but that so, is still doing it for the sake of Allah, isn't it? Really? Sake of Allah, but at the same time, I know that if I'm, if I'm going to go and pay some charity, I'm actually more thinking about hereafter. Okay, I understand. Does that yeah, make yeah, sense? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, I, yeah, I feel like I'm building. I feel like I'm building two empires. Right, right, inshallah. Right, right. I feel inshallah. like I'm building something for the hereafter. I feel yeah. like I'm bi- building something while I'm here. Because the reality is, I, I've still we've still got to live here. And like we like we spoke off air, like Allah created us to be successful. I firmly believe that, and He didn't create us for, to sit around doing nothing. So we do we do our we do when I say we do our deen, we do our our five daily prayers we learn our quran we do good deeds but we also do our work because yeah, yeah, we yeah. want to build something while we're here and i want to i want to leave like a legacy behind me so i don't do it with the intention i'm doing this with dunya like making like associating partners with Allah or anything like that but i do it knowing that this is going to benefit me while i'm here so in the sense that everything is from Allah anyway but i want to i want to i want to make money and i want to do certain things while i'm here but also there's things that i'll do which i'm thinking about the hereafter that makes sense. Does that, that make sense? sense? Yeah, because yeah, like, and also like, there's this du'a that's like, uh, that translates to like, Oh Allah, um, uh, give me good in the, yeah. this life, give me good in the next yeah. life and save me from fire hell. So yeah, I'm definitely not saying that like, we shouldn't like want good in this life. Yeah. I just mean, my point is that we should still do it for the sake of Allah. Of course. Like doing good because like, we want to like, be comfortable in this life for the sake of Allah. Like it's like, it's, it's a, like, because it's our duty to like make sure our family is comfortable, make yeah. sure like we're healthy to the best of our ability, make sure we're looking after our bodies, looking after ourselves and that kind of stuff. So I think that's for really sure. It's, it comes into like, for instance, I went to Manchester this weekend. Now, I didn't Ooh, that's go. That's lavish. Huh? I said, that's lavish. Well, well, I went up north. <laughs> um, I didn't go. Obviously, I'm go I'm, for the sake of all I, I work and, and b- building a brand and building the workplace and that. Um, so I go with the intention of you know I'm 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 going for I'm going for work and I'm going to build what I've got in dunya. Yeah. It's, but if I was to go away for the weekend with some brothers to go and do some something more Islamic, for me I felt like I was building dunya at the weekend and I was build, building what I've got now. And I'm not saying I'm not saying there's reward in it or there's no reward in it. I know it's halal, but if I went away for the weekend on an Islamic based trip, then I was going to go and do maybe go and give dawah or I would feel. Do you know what I mean? So uh, I, I do. I would say that mean, yeah. if I went away with some brothers to go and I would do to do something Islamic, more Islamic, um, and giving dawah or visiting masjids or visiting brothers, whatever it is, compared to what I did, I feel like there'd be a lot that would be for the hereafter. Yeah. But this one was like. I'm not saying I went and there's going to be a huge reward with what I did, but it's kind of all part of my means that right, I need right, to do right. this to build what I've got going on in the dunya. So that's what I mean by... No, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. But obviously, there's, everything's for the sake of Allah, that first and foremost. But yeah. I feel like there's more, there would obviously be more reward, more barakah in doing other other activities. Yes, yeah, certain ibadah may have like a larger You um, would think reward. so, but Allah knows yeah. best. You Allah never know. Best. There might be... Allah might, I, Allah might love the fact that I'm doing it to... In a, to build that halal halal business yeah. to to be able to provide and to be able to give sadaqah and to be able to do good for the for good for mankind so Allah knows best Allah really knows best. speaking of Ramadan is coming well it's not coming up but it's, it is actually very soon if you think about it bro because we're in March like it's coming. we're in March bro and it's actually it starts at the end of May so that's between like if you just think about it months wise calendar uh, month wise there's one month between it like we're in March now May is when it starts there's only April in the way Wow. If you think about it that way, I mean, I know if you want to really think about it, yeah, it's like three months, but if you really like want to think about it in the way, in like the way that I'm saying it, there's, we've got one month of April, mm-hmm. like left, and then in May, it's Ramadan, inshallah. Oh, bro, I can't wait. Just speaking about it, because he's so excited. Yeah, like, bro, my my friend, uh, Nasir, sent me um, a, a, a voice memo. He went to, he just came out from Umrah of like the recitation of Umrah. Shiva speaking about yeah. bro, like it just reminds me of Ramadan, it reminds me of Makkah, yeah, like ah, yeah. oh, bro, like we've got free, we've got like a one month sandwich and we're there, inshallah, bro. I can't wait. The feeling of Ramadan, like uh, oh man, I can't wait, bro. We and like Ramadan is gonna be so, bro. I just love like, for, all right, I know a lot of people say like, oh, 
like oh these Ramadan Muslims and stuff like that like oh how bad is it that there's these Muslims who like don't practice all year and when it comes to Ramadan they're like praying five times a day and fast bro like what's wrong with that know, like obviously no no what's wrong with that because it is wrong yeah. to not yeah, practice yeah, it all the time but what I'm saying is maybe that Ramadan is like what's gonna boost them for the rest and like get them on the dean so we shouldn't be like oh you're Ramadan Muslim that's bad yeah, we sure. should be like like oh that's sick that you're on this like Hopefully let's they, do it they, together and uh, the fact that this iman is feeling stronger we should capitalize off that and like um like you know help uh each other and ourselves because none of us are obviously perfect but like, we should help ourselves like improve ourselves and each other and bro like so that's what I, I love the fact that everyone's like more on it i love the fact that there's this vibe of deen going around i love the fact that everyone's fasting together so it doesn't feel as hard and i love the fact that there's so many islamic events and stuff happening obviously we shouldn't let those islamic events um get in the way of our like getting the most out of ramadan but also bro like i love attending islamic events and stuff in ramadan like we should for sure like think about even potentially like if the if the um or if the um, what is it called the demand is there mm -hmm. like well there's so we could do like a live show in Ramadan do you know what I mean like it would only take like obviously I'll, I'll, but if you think about it bro we're, like, we're still going to be doing it for the sake of Allah and yeah. stuff like we'll be we'll be trying to spread this message and stuff but it'll be it may, like, but Ramadan is just like I love the vibe yeah man. for sure I view um, I view uh, Ramadan as a as Allah's tr opens a treasure chest mm. and we can just help ourselves to it because Obviously, deeds are multiplied. Every there's so much, there's so much blessing in that month. I love it, bro, and it's I find it such a um, iman booster every single time. So I, when I come out of Ramadan, I still feel I find it re recharge my batteries. How many Ramadans have you done now since you this started? This will be Muslim? my fourth one. Fourth Ramadan. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Beautiful. I got some plans, inshallah, for this for this one. Yeah. Oh, inshallah. Well, you have, don't you? Inshallah. Inshallah. May Allah make it easy for you. May I, I mean, you. and I mean. may Allah make it available to you as well my I plans mean, inshallah I'll make dua for that but I know you're a very busy man no but I I'm not completely not not in like just I've just a few days maybe yeah 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 because I, I can't go I can't I can't I can't leave my family for too long because I want to be there to support my family course, so, my, so my wife and my boy can enjoy, enjoy I might be up for that as well but I was speaking to um, Josh right um, and there's a there's a, a fantastic project going on um, that um, that we obviously want to go to um, just for a few days, inshallah. But maybe we could use that as a time that we could do something for Freshly Grounded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what, bro? Like, I can imagine myself attending. I would love to. Yeah. Do you know what I said? To, I said to Josh, I said, if we go and if we if we leave our families and go and do that hardship, put ourselves in that situation during this month, can you imagine the the rewards are multiplied? It can only be oh. a good thing, even if it's just four, three or four nights. Yeah, it's very true. Inshallah, I have to get Sorry. permission from my wife first. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but inshallah, bro. That, inshallah, that's what's exciting me because my intention for this Ramadan, alhamdulillah, I'm in the situation now with work. I don't need to be there as much, so I'm gonna really like book out more easy, time. Yeah. So I will take it easier. But the time when I'm not at work, I want to try and be, be active, yeah, and utilize it. And see, that's see, it, see more brothers and do a bit more, do more about them and get get on my Quran, etc. 100. percent We need to get that. Like we, there's, like you said, there's extra, extra. Like, you want, like I said, the treasure chest, like Allah's makes it makes it so easy for us. We'd be actually foolish not to like make advantage of doing more. And yeah. I say like remind them for myself first and foremost, like because we, we can slip in Ramadan, we can have big sleep ins because obviously we've had late nights and of stuff. And we can like try and sleep off the day and complain that we're hungry and tired. But inshallah, my intention this this Ramadan is to really like get back on it in a in a in a in a proper way. I make lots of du'as as well and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, Non-stop sure. du'as, bro. Du'as. But you know the other thing that I um, thought about, right, is that uh, this thing that I heard about <coughs> when I was studying is about the concept of like making jokes about the dean. Now, obviously, we know like that we shouldn't make jokes about the dean, and um, we know that um, the people who do make jokes about the dean on the day—I uh, can't remember if it's on Day of Judgment—but essentially, they're they're going to get questioned about it, right? And when they get questioned about it, uh, when I I say they, but like we we got to be conscious of not falling into it. So, so, as like humankind, when we get questioned about these jokes that we make, um, we're gonna say we're gonna reply. May Allah save us from that. But the the people would reply saying, "Oh, we only, uh, but we were only saying it in jest yeah. or we were joking." And then they will be said, it will be it will be said to them, "Oh, were you making jest about the religion of Allah?" Like like. Because like like as if that's a response like that's not a response like you were joking also you was making jokes about right so um, my point is is that 
the lecturer the lecturer was saying that we should actually be so conscious of the jokes we make about the religion that we should just stay far from it yeah. like for example you know sometimes we might think like this is not actually a joke about the religion but like if it can be seen like that both stay away it's not mm. so for, i'll give you an example um, one thing that a lot of people will say is like um Oh, bro, there's one that's such a common joke, bro. I really can't think about it. I can't think of it now, but I was thinking about it on the way. And I definitely, I was like, ah, oh, I really want to speak about this on the podcast because uh, it's beneficial to me. It's like a, jo- a common joke that people say like, um, oh, bro, I, I literally can't remember. It'll, it'll come to me, bro. But essentially the concept is that, you know, like uh, me even saying this right now, we're probably thinking, oh, we don't ever do that. So that's fine. Like, obviously, yes, we don't make jokes about the religion. Like, we, we don't say like, things that are blatant jokes about the religion, like we don't mock it, but we might do it in a way that we don't actually think we are like, and especially practicing brothers, bro, because perhaps people are thinking about the religion more often. Yeah. So then when they make their jokes, sometimes their jokes, because well, when you're practicing, um, sometimes you think about the religion all the time. Well, you should, everyone, everyone should think about religion all the time, right? So if you're thinking about the religion all the time, even when you're having a laugh, you might, you're still thinking about religion, right? Yeah. But you gotta be conscious of not then making a joke that involves a religion. Do you know what I mean? So. Uh, bro, I, I honestly, there's one joke that I really, I think is so common that people make, um, uh, but I really can't think about it. But anyway, there's all like these Instagram, you know what's really popular is like when there's an Instagram meme about um, like a funny joke that's like Islamic. Yeah. Well, it's not Islamic, but it's like a joke about the religion. And like you even see like Islamic pages reposting it because obviously it's just a joke and it relates to us. Yeah. But what we got to be conscious of is like, is that yeah, mocking the religion? Because well, Think about this, yeah. Would you ever make a joke to mock your father? Do you know what I mean? Like, the respect that you have for your dad, the yeah. respect that we should have for our dad. Like, I know if I made a joke about my dad, um, like, he'd be, like, a bit offended. And even in that presentation that I was talking about that I do, there was a joke about my dad in the presentation. And the morning before my presentation, I told my wife about it. I said, I'm thinking about taking it out because overnight I was thinking about it. And alhamdulillah, I feel, I feel like Allah put this thought in my head, yeah, that, like, do I really want that slide in my presentation? Because is it mocking my dad? Now, obviously, it was just a joke. And it was like, I know the crowd would have loved it. And it's like about, you know, like, also oh, like, um, you know, I am, uh, I like, I came from, uh, like, my parents. I Basically, in the presentation, I introduced myself a bit. Yeah. So I'm like, you know, I was born here. My mom was born here. My dad was born in Pakistan, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I tell a bit about my dad. And then I was thinking, do you know what? Like, that, what I say about my dad, if he was in the room would he like me to say that and i thought you know what he might feel a bit like i'm not respecting him mm. and so and that's my dad bro mm. so then you're thinking if you make religions about if you make jokes about the religion yeah. we should have so much more shyness towards allah than we have towards our parents like we should be like too shy to like maybe say something that might come across rude to the religion for sure i once um i heard something that if you if you were to blatantly make jokes uh about Allah's Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, you can actually—it's actually a way of actually leaving the, leaving the religion of Islam. So it's serious, bro. And do you know what? No one's perfect, and I've definitely I haven't fallen into I don't know his best what I've fallen into, but um, do you write jokes like it's it's not something to, to joke about, bro? Bro, I remember I remember you, the I, joke. Yeah, yeah, I remember the joke. Okay, this is what it was. Yeah. Any covers? <laughs> Let me come. It's, uh, the joke is this, yeah? yeah. And bro, I'm telling you, you would have heard this one. You know, like as a joke, sometimes people will say like, oh. um, They'll see some. They'll see like a stuff for like, They might see like a uh, 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 like a female or something that they think is attractive, and then as a joke they'll be like, "Oh, bro, the first look is halal." Like that. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. That's a yeah, joke. Yeah, that's yeah, a common yeah, one yeah, that you yeah, hear, yeah, you know, yeah, every yeah, now and yeah, again. Yeah, it's true, bro. Like you're mocking the religion, like like because the yeah. concept of that is the concept of it, bro. Oh, excuse me, shivers. The concept yeah. of it is that Allah's mercy is so great, yeah. That if like your eye by your eye, like you see something that you shouldn't, like you see like an attractive female in a certain way, yeah. As as Allah knows best, but to the best of my ability, this is what the concept of it is that Allah's mercy is so great that you're not gonna get punished for that because like you didn't mean to like look at her in that way, but like it's just like quick t- like yeah, a quick, no, but then sometimes bro we mock like bro and we look at some like obviously i say we but i'm saying like generally we might look at someone and be like oh bro the first look is halal it's fine yeah bro like obviously we know that's a, like it's like the person might be joking something but bro you're basically saying like that's mocking allah's most like allah's saying like i'm so i'm like a stuff i'm not speaking on behalf of allah but like allah is so yeah. merciful to us that he will like let that go yeah and we're like like yeah, know, playing know, off know, that know, joke that came up over the weekend bro about Obviously, I spend time with non-Muslims as well, and I'm far from perfect. I'm not trying to sit on a pedestal, right. but it's like they're trying to clarify the rules of Islam in the sense that, okay, so the first look 
is halal. Oh, that actually came up. Yeah, Subhanallah. recently, man. Uh, do you know it's actually come up quite a few times, yeah? Yeah. And it's like, okay, so does that mean you can just carry on looking and it's and it's still halal? And then another brother stepped in, who's Muslim brother, and said, well, no, that, that would be staring and gazing. Like, right. you obviously can't do that. But it's like, it's fun. It's not funny, but it's like, for non-Muslims who do not fear Allah and do not know, like, the, the rules and regulations of it, bro, like, you obviously you have that one one you can look once. So the question was, oh, can I just carry on? Can I just carry on looking? Yeah. And it's not like I sit there and start laughing, but it's almost like you forget that you it's forget, actually, you like, forget the seriousness, seriousness of, it. of it, bro. And we get we forget the seriousness of this religion, and we forget the yeah. seriousness of, of the hereafter, and we forget the seriousness. This is like it's no joke, man. We, we get we get very relaxed. I for one get relaxed sometimes, especially when your well, company yeah, no, isn't same, yeah. when your company isn't like pious and righteous. The reality is, like, if you don't fear Allah, man, like, um, you're not going to implement this stuff. And you, and it rubs off on you in the sense that, you know, you can only look once, bro. Like, obviously, we live in the West where there's constantly there's, there's other women around us. And we're men. Mm. And, um, it catches our attention, and, and it catches our attention. And it our attention. And you have to remind yourself to have your gaze low, man, because it's, it is serious, bro. And you do get you do get relaxed and think, oh, I'm, I'm, this, is it. this is the reality of where I live. Like, there's obviously going to be a lot of women around, around me. But when you find yourself in a Muslim country when there's a lot majority of the women are covered up and modest, you don't even like, you don't mess around with it. You feel like, do you know what? I think for me, if you fear, if I can see that a sister fears Allah, like it almost makes me like even more scared to even, not that I was going to stay. And don't you feel way. like it gives you this protective vibe of like, you want to protect, that's your sister. hundred percent. Yeah. And I thought I would have more, res- I, I mean, you know, I have even more respect for like making sure that I'm not even, not even going to look at the face or just, just, do you know what I mean? I'm not that I, I don't want to like expose myself. I don't look at women. Man. I'm, I feel like I, know, I completely my understand what you're saying. But like when I see that someone's gone to the effort to even, to be that extra bit modest, I'll make sure like I'll, I have even more respect for that sister and would just, automatically the other way when, when it's almost like my eyes like it make, it's a reminder more to me that they're be, they're covering up for the sake of Allah yeah. so I need to just respect that not that if someone isn't covered up I'm going to, I'm going to stand there and gawp there right right but obviously you do if someone's not covered up you'll, you'll see them clearer of course and it always takes me a few, yeah so um, you know what I'm saying 100% man 100% what you were even saying about like having um, people around you who are like God fearing and stuff and like um, have strong iman it's so important because cause even this bro it's it really like it, our religion should be at the forefront of anything we do and should be the control uh, should control all the decisions we make mm. whether those decisions are about business or not or whether those decisions are, uh, decisions are around religion or not so even if they're out in business and stuff right and without expo- like talking in details i was speaking to yes yesterday to somebody about what i spoke to you about this morning like i was saying i had a couple of stresses and stuff and I, in my head, and I even said this actually, I, I felt like you know what I want to I want to talk to Sam about this because because I was getting a very one sided response. I, I don't want to like I don't want to say you know yeah, 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 like yeah. I wanted to I wanted to ask speak to someone who maybe like for like with do you know what I'm trying to say, bro? Like I don't want to say like but okay, I always so what I'm I trying think, to get. I think without going into it, it's the sense of. Uh, it's good to hear no, you're, not, you're not talking to the side like this sorry that's what I've been doing for the last little minute yeah you did it for the last hour I think maybe yeah. you should have said something before expert no oh, okay it's very good to with with any issues to speak to someone just with that um, maybe they uh, use it in a very Islamic way mm. maybe because mm. um, when you can get advice from people and if they I don't know I think the more taqwa and connection you have with Allah the the better you, the better to get that advice from someone especially if they've got experience that they're maybe they're practicing plus plus they have that understanding of that thing as well understanding of the other situations as well obviously the the listeners are, have no idea what we're talking about no. I'll put it I want to I'll build up for for myself so I'll say um Say I'm having uh, say I'm having a problem with my business right um and I'm looking at my my business and thinking Okay, I want I want to do better than I'm doing. I've got bills coming up. My house is expensive. My child needs childcare, and I'm getting a bit stressed. Yeah. So I'll go to I'll go to someone who and I'll say, look, I'm a bit worried. I want I need to uh, I need to start earning more money than I've got because I've got a lot of expensive things coming up. I've got to go and take my missus on holiday. I've got to do this. Got to do that. And when you hear speak to someone who doesn't necessarily bring Allah into the advice, it, it can sometimes not be as helpful. But maybe when you speak to someone and say, when you break down the Qadr of Allah and, and talks about sabr and talks about, you know, all the blessings that I have already 
it ma- it kind of makes you see things in a whole new light and it kind yeah. of takes away the stress. That's, it takes away the stress and it's strength to duty, man. It's it's only positive. Only positive, man. Like um just a reminder for anyone anyone who's just like out there trying to just trying to hustle or do a halal hustle and and build their own business, build their own empire. Like it takes so much time. We it's in our in our nature that we want things like overnight. Right. We want everything overnight. We go to start going to the gym for a week and we 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 expect to look in the mirror and, and expect to be in immaculate shape. But it doesn't. It takes it takes years. It takes years for anything worth. Like we said in, in last in last uh, last week's podcast, anything worth obtaining takes a lot of time takes a lot of consistency and a lot of a lot of sacrifice to be able to achieve it mm. and we're so we're so impatient naturally um that we we want everything straight away but it's like i like i said like we're we're farmers like laying like we're put laying seeds uh, or we're builders like just building foundations we're about we're gonna we, we want to build this huge massive mansion or we want to harvest all these huge crops but it takes time. We need to we need to plant the seeds. We need to build the foundations and be patient. And as we go along, expect and uh, know that we can't expect these great things to happen overnight. Mm. But remember, if we're consistent and we carry on doing what we're doing, we'll be able to harvest beautiful crops and we'll be able to build a huge big mansion. But it takes time and mm. it takes patience. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, you have to. We have to keep that in our. Mind. That was a beautiful speech, Sam. Alhamdulillah. I was man. taken back. I was taken aback a bit by it, to be honest. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Um, I really mean that because no, no, I fall yeah. into it all the time, bro. Yeah. Like. I've been. We've I've become been complacent, right? So complacent. And you know what we see? We so like we've, we've got so much pressure from the, our surroundings. We see people doing mm. well. We're on social media. People, everyone seems to be doing so well. Mm. But obviously, the people who are putting up everything on social media of them doing well, they we don't know the the ins and outs of it. Mm. It's very easy to to display yourself doing well, but the reality is like we. It's not always the case, is it? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And the other thing is that when we when we really think about it, not in the hereafter, like. Like the most successful people are not going to be the people with the most money or the they're going to be the people with the strongest iman and the people who have obtained the mercy of Allah and who have made tawbah. Bro, I was <coughs> I was in the uh, in the mosque last Friday Jumma and I was um I was quite towards the back and I was standing at the time a lot of people were sitting and I was looking at the sea of people in front of me and I think to myself Subhanallah like amongst these people there will be some people who are so rich there will be some people who are so uh, n- uh not as fortunate. Um, and there'll be such a diverse amount of people here. There's different colors. There was different um, cultures. Everything, all in, all sat down, h- hundreds of people. And I was thinking, cause I went to a fairly big mosque, and I was thinking to myself, it's crazy how like a person could be sat there that has all of the uh, dunya that they could want. Um, they could have all of the dunya that they want. So my phone was ringing. And then they could also, uh, but they're like, Iman might not be like as strong, but there could be a person sat there who has like, he's really struggling with their dunya, but they have like a really strong Iman. And in the afterlife, like obviously we only Allah knows best, but in the afterlife, imagine like that person who like is really struggling in this dunya, but like in the afterlife, he's going to be so, uh, he's going to be really successful. Like, and the one who is successful in his dunya might not be. Obviously, I'm not judging those specific people because I wasn't, I wasn't looking at specific people yeah. and making that, but I'm saying like that concept of like, Really and truly, like our success in terms of dunya really doesn't mean much, like in the afterlife. Do you know what I mean? It's mad. It's the bro. thing we're like, so worried and, and concerned. We only can, or sometimes we only chat to people. We might only chat to people if we think they're like they got something for us, or yeah. like we think they're successful. It's like it's we should be chatting to people that like we think that they make great company because of their iman. Yeah, and people who can make du'a for us and people that can inspire us. But this is this is the nature of dunya, brother. It, it, in, it engrosses us so much that if we're speaking honestly, it's almost like we. It's almost that like we live like we're more worried about this dunya than we're worried about the hereafter. The amount of effort that we go into making sure that we're building, we're doing business and we're doing this, that and the other. Man, Imagine yeah. if we put that into the one that matters, which is the hereafter. May Allah guide us and make it easy, I mean, easy for us I mean. and for all our viewers and listeners. Because remember, mm. like, we're only here for such a short time. And we're in the hereafter for eternity. Why do we? Why do we care? We won't care on that day. Lovely, we're too busy build, we're, tr- we're not trying to build here. Why aren't we building? Why aren't we thinking about the the mansion and paradise that we could be building? Why aren't we getting up for tajid every single night? Do you know what lovely. I mean? We can't see. We can't see the riches of the hereafter. We can't see them, so we forget about them. We can see our dunya riches. We can see, you know, what we're, we're doing in dunya. Yeah, we can compare it. Can't we can we? compare it. And we can see it, and it, it feels like you go into your bank account and you can see your pro- you see your progress. You look, you know, you can see what you're building and all the developments you've got in dunya, but we can't see what we're doing in the hereafter. We can't even see how how rich our hereafter is. We're not even almost like not even thinking about it. That's the test because we got to put trust. Mad. 
Should we uh should we pump it up a bit and go into current events? Vince. Current events. Vince. Current events. Vince. Red one. Red one. You guys aren't exactly the what do you call them? You know those people that acapella group. You sound like an acapella group, that's it. Acapella yeah. group. Acapella group. Acapella group. You look like an acapella man. A what? Acapella man. I look like a acapella man. I look like did you see I look like a apaca, the acapella the animal. What's that animal like? A cockatoo or something? A I'm not sure. Um, cockatoo. Who do I like? A cockatoo. Sorry. Like a what? Current events. <laughs> Red <laughs> one. Um, is your gain up? Yeah. Who's uh, gain? My gain up? is up. Yeah. Yeah. Who's got gains? Red has. I really don't. <laughs> I know someone who does. <laughs> Let's get it going. Sam, so you've been training a lot. Let's talk about you. Did look you at him, man. Look at him tensing his triceps. No, no. Right. You've been training a lot. Intensity. That's just tensing. natural. No, no, no. Just natural. The, you can't talk. Apparently, we can't talk about. It. He's very sensitive. Oh, okay. uh, Red. Let's. What's the first current event? Um, a uh, little light-hearted. Uh, in the Netherlands, there was a 99-year-old woman who who had a dream come true. Um, she was arrested. And her dream was to be arrested and put into handcuffs and put into prison. And that came true. And what did she get arrested for? Huh? What did she get arrested for? Um, oh, despite lacking the criminal requirements, she still got locked up. She said, I guess they just... Fulfilled her dream. Yeah. Is that a fetish? What, what kind of dreams do you guys have? I don't know whether it would count as a fetish. I feel like that is... Was it? Was there anything... Excuse, excuse me for my crudeness, but was there anything... Oh, no, she's 99. She's That's, 99. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. She's just what kind of weird of... dreams do you guys have? Faso? <laughs> I feel like Faso is the type of guy to have weird, weird, weird dreams. dreams. <laughs> no, not really. It happens a lot more. Like, I don't know. I would like, there's, uh, there's certain dreams I would love to... There's certain dreams I would love to have. Like... Like... Um, like like obviously to see the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mm-hmm. uh good dreams you know good dreams come from allah so but i mean generally you know i don't what what do you mean she, oh, no, she, she mean dream, dream she, as in it was her dream to oh, get arrested oh okay 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 oh no my oh, dreams oh i thought you meant yeah. like an actual like no 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 dream no, 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 no it, it was, was her dream like, that's what i was yeah. just like, trying to so work out it, like what's the, the headline logic is, behind that woman 99 has dream of being arrested come true oh so she had a dream of oh that's a really rubbish dream to have yeah right that is, isn't it? What do I have? From my dream is to gain Jannah. I mean, okay. I mean, inshallah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my dream uh, is to is to gain Jannah. Yeah, like what you and I and everybody and Red and everybody listening here that dream. I mean, I mean, yeah. Ya Rab. Um, my other dream. Uh, do I have a dream? Okay. I don't mean. Malcolm X had a dream. I think that was just Martin Luther King. Michael Max probably had a dream as well. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure he did. What's uh, your dream and goals? I don't really know, Sam. To be honest, uh, you know, uh, do everything we've for got, the sake of Allah. We've got loads of dreams, I'm sure. Yeah, we have. I have got loads of goals, but you know what? It's all doing your stuff. I'm not. I won't go into it too much now. Yeah. Got, it's just. It's just to be. Just to have a beautiful family and to be successful in in dunya. To be honest, that's 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 my ultimate dream, and to be able to set up. At my own charity one day, inshallah, we'll um, and to and to basically not have to not have to work, but the only work I do is charity work. Mm. That's my yeah, that's my ultimate amazing. dream. Yeah. To be honest, to be financially stable, I second that, and to be financially free, and my my day to day work would be just working for the sake of Allah. That's, that's everybody's goal, though, isn't it? Really, I don't so think it, I don't think it's that unrealistic. I think you just have to um, I think you have to work hard for a bit. And then just monitor how much how, how you live your life. Is it okay for me to steal your dream? Yes. Nabbed. I don't know why I said that. Nabbed is like when you nabbed. Red, what, what's your dream? My dream. Um, kind of again similar. World's along best producer. World's best podcast producer. He's already got that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sam. That's uh, yeah. okay. I don't know, man. I've got. I've got. I think it's. I'm a very simple man with simple needs. So I guess it's the same. Same for me to be successful in this dunya. And next, and then um, have some kind of stuff. You know, I don't want to be rich or anything. I just want stability in my life. To be honest, do you do you not actually want to be rich? No, not really. I want ha- I want to have enough money to be comfortable. But then that would be maybe, yeah. That is rich, isn't it? Though, isn't it? That, yeah, because this is this is interesting. The reason I say that, Red, is because I went to a um a business business development lecture once, mm. and it's all about like. 
it was all about setting what do you really want and if you're being really honest then mm-hmm. no one can argue argue against this you want to be financially free in the sense that you don't have to want to worry about money yeah you don't want to have to worry about your bills and not having enough money for your bills your mm-hmm. rent whatever it is and you want to be able to go out for dinner when you want you want to be able to go on holiday if you want you want to be able to and you want to have ni- nice clothes and people will say oh no i don't want all that but reality is you mm-hmm. you want to be comfortable and like you said, you want you want comfort, and to to obtain that, especially living in the West, you do have to have a reasonable amount of money. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So in reality, is it would make everyone's life a lot easier if we did have money in the bank. Like yeah. a, 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 not, I'm not saying a lot of money, but you yeah, know, yeah, a yeah. reasonable amount of money. In yeah, the that's bank. what I mean. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. So uh, what the point I was getting at is we should we shouldn't limit ourselves, and we shouldn't settle for anything but what we want. And yeah. understand, obviously, the Qadr of Allah, Allah's, Allah's written our risk yeah. and how much money we're going to earn. But we should strive to try and obtain as much as we can while we're here. Yeah. <laughs> money. I don't know. I just feel like the I thing had, is, Sam, part of this conversation. sometimes I tell myself that, yeah. you know, I want that. I just want that stability. But then sometimes I'll be crazy enough to think like, oh, man, I wish I had enough to be, you know, you know, put it towards like philanthropy and helping out humanity in some way. For and, sure. And if I think you, you get is, car, what car would you get? Huh? If you could get like a dope car, what car would you get? A dope car. When you say dope, when you say can dope, can you just for the um, for the non-American eighties <laughs> listeners, can you just explain what dope means? If you could, if you <laughs> <laughs> dope mean? If you could have a really good car, uh, Red, which one would you get? I'm a I'm a very old school kind of guy, so I can see I, that. I love um, I, I love MG. my mustangs and chevys oh. mm. i would i would love to get a 67 mustang like I, you know what even if i could even if i could buy one from like uh a scrapyard somewhere and like rebuild it myself i would do it because so i'm saying if if someone said if, to you yeah not nothing to do with the cost but like hey man look you can have one car any kind of the world like just have a car uh-huh. you can choose whatever car you want and you're gonna say uh, scrapyard Mustang. Okay, Sam. Okay, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'll probably have a Mercedes G wagon. Oh, Ooh. I do love those. I've been oh, in one. They're really nice. I was not gonna say that, and now oh. I feel like nabbing it again. You do. Nah, I'm gonna. What would you have? Uh, thanks, Sam, for asking with so much enthusiasm. <laughs> Yellow Lamborghini, red Ferrari, something like that. I know what you lot are like. Uh, you lot. What was that? What was young that entrepreneurs. <laughs> um. <laughs> I I think I'd want, like? I'd want either a Range Rover like a white like yeah. Range Rover or a Porsche Panamera yeah. and the Porsche Panamera you know that one it's like it's like it's really nice it's like a, it's is like that a family the car really big bottom it's a really it's a, like a five door isn't it it's a five door Porsche five and so door. it's like if you had a family you could because most Porsches are really for like a couple because like they like two door or like two seats this is five seats five doors and it's. Uh, so you're a flashy uh, family man. You'd be, you'd be the flashy family man. No, I'm just saying. If someone said, I, I, I have no, I have no intention to buy that right now. But or ever, like, not right now. Definitely not. Do you right remember now, when the um, when it came out, and also the the five door Aston Martin came out? At the I same don't remember time. that because I'm not really into cars. When was that? The 70s. I'm not really into cars, but my friend had it, and we used to drive in it. It was beautiful. Oh really? Yeah. It was 30 now, exam. Were you 20? 23. Ooh. I don't know, what are you 34? Why do I look 34? No, I'm just because I, I know think you actually know my about age. 19. No, I think it's just because you're substantially older than me, so I just can't think of 27. What. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. It's right, we've got a quite a good um, age range here. 24. Right? So 20, 27, 24, 22. 23. Oh, forget actually. you. You're the youngest. Oh, 23. Really? Sorry, sorry, sorry. You go on like you're like the, the boss around here, but you're the youngest. <laughs> Go on, look at boss. What do you do? You walk around throwing your weight around, throwing, <laughs> throwing, throwing, throwing your new muscly arms around, telling people, telling Reddit to do, telling me where to sit. And the reality is, you're the youngest here. He's actually, the, I don't want to, <laughs> he's actually the smallest here too. I, I disagree with but that. But he's, he, yeah, I'm he's, here. A, he's the smallest here, I'm but the smallest he's, the alpha, he's the alpha male here, right? I've, I've I'm definitely not. I, would you agree, Sam? Uh, he does. No, right, yeah. his thing. I want to. I want to. I want to. I want to clear this up for once and for all, yeah. Because <laughs> we get a lot of comments from the listeners as well, like yeah. about how, like, You're like I, I, not overpowering, but like about how, like, maybe like let Sam talk more stuff. And this is just to clear things <laughs> up, guys. Yeah, me and Sam, alhamdulillah. And now he's gonna try and lie, like he's gonna try and say that it's not true. <laughs> but we have conversations about this all the time. And alhamdulillah, I was like, um, I had like done the next phase before, which was my other podcast. And Sam hadn't done podcasting. So Sam said, like, very much so, if you could take the lead, like, I'm like kind of presenting for now, like, just kind of so I can get my feet out of here. I was like, yeah, cool. So I'm only like, c- like, controlling the way the podcast goes, like, I was in the first couple of episodes because, like, Sam ha- Sam wasn't in like didn't know much about podcasting. But now you're like, bro, you could do, you could run this, you could do a whole episode by yourself, bro. 
Like you're proper, you're fully uh, capable of it. On that note, Red One, what's the next wow. current event? Sam's an independent. Um, I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to argue about this issue anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I've asked you. Actually, no. I, I just. I just <laughs> 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 nothing. <laughs> 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 I swear, Sam. Nothing. I swear. Do I have you? <laughs> Alright, go ahead. Red, red um, one. Is it? Something interesting actually came up as well over here. Um, so last night I was talking to a friend about uh, AI and uh, the future and technology, right? Mm -hmm. And we were arguing about how. Um, whether it's possible for holograms to actually uh, exist, and I don't know whether pe people actually know what a hologram is. It's not. It's not holo a hologram. Isn't what you know. People saw Tupac in Coachella, but that was a two. That was like a two D thing. It's not a hologram. It's an actual three D. You know, animate thing mm. created by light. We we're arguing about that whether it's possible or not. Um, when you say argue, you mean physically. like debating? No, not <laughs> not arguing physically. Physically, but, um, deba funny. debating over the phone. Um, it was good. But uh, the reason why I mentioned that is because Facebook are now actually using artificial intelligence to help prevent live uh, stream suicides. And I don't know whether you guys are actually... Really? Yeah. So I don't know whether it's actually... Uh, it's, it's, people are actually aware of it, but people actually go online um, and live stream things like, you know, self-harm and oh, suicide bro. and things like That's that. I don't so know whether sad, you've actually... And, and, and it's really sad. Mm. But yeah, Facebook have actually got a community department who have developed an algorithm um, to basically target these kind of uh, situations online and then get it reported back and deal with it in a way, which is really helpful, uh, I think. Like, you know, that they don't have real life humans actually doing it. We've, we've got AI doing it for us now. Mm. And that's quite interesting. Like, it's, it's, it's so um, intricate and so intelligent that it can pick up on these things now, even from like tiny, tiny, you know, key words and things that are basically being thrown around. But um, yeah, what are you guys, what are your guys' thoughts on that, and what do you think about the future? What do you think we have ahead of us? Well, we we were talking on uh, my final episode of the next phase when you were on it, weren't we? About how like dark the internet is. That's right. Yeah. And like, it oh. doesn't surprise me at all that these things exist because no, like the internet me, no. is really dark place. There's all there's all sorts of awful things you can do find on the internet. Sam was saying even like you could do stuff like hire hitmen. You can you can it's just it's the, the internet is a really dark place if you really look into it. And um, so no, that doesn't surprise me at all. And it's really good that at least people are putting things in action where they can try and like stop stuff like suicides and stuff. If that is if they, if they if they're successful in stopping even one suicide uh, by using this like technology and this algorithm that they've made, then that's that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's very sad that you're right. It's a, it can be a very dark place. Obviously, there's a lot of benefit that comes from the internet, but there is a lot of evil and, and darkness. Um, and that's just really when you said that. I, I mean, I've never looked into that myself, but I guess a really, 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 really sad thing to think mm -hmm. about. And were, I mean, who would tune in? Who would tune? Like, I heard a horrible story yesterday from uh, Abu Bakr. He was talking about. Uh, recently, a, a young, uh, young, I think Polish girl, uh, was bullied at school and just took her own life, and it's just a very, 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 very sad thing. Suicide. Mm. It's a really, really like it's it's very, very sad. So just as you said that, Red, it was um, it just made me made, made me contemplate how like the state of mind that someone has to be in to want to take their own life. It just um, it's very sad. So what do I think the future holds? What do you what do you think the future holds? So what would you what would you you know say you would expect to see in maybe the next twenty years um, in terms of like you know intelligence and and technology? I think there will definitely be like stuff like um, like let's say if I was to like FaceTime Sam, it would no it would no longer be uh, me on the screen. It'd be me like hovering in front of the screen like so a hologram. hologram yeah. Not. Um, and it'd not. be really cool because I'd be like, because uh, then like I could always be with Sam. Yeah, you'd love that, wouldn't you, Sam? That's horrible thought. I thought, <laughs> I thought the other, I thought the other day I took a picture of my uh, my boy, and obviously it was really good quality on the camera. It was like it came up really really nice, and I thought, wow, like when I look at the pictures of me when I was a little boy that I've got now, my parents have got now. They're obviously that the the quality of the actual picture mm. isn't obviously isn't great. It was what it was 20, 27, 26 years ago. Sure. But now I've got a picture of what my boy looks like. When he's older and looks at, looks at the pictures and videos of what he looked like when he was younger, I wonder what the quality of camera and picture will be. Mm. And I wonder whether he'll look at that quality that I'm, we're looking at now and think, wow, that's so dated. And yeah. how I wonder how like um, how pictures are going to improve 
dr- so much because they will yeah. there will be an improvement yeah. in it but how much more can you improve because some of the quality we get on as you know as a media man mm-hmm. quality is, is perfect yeah but surely when people are looking back at it in in say 20 years to come or even 10 years to come they'll be able to recognize that maybe it is like a the quality is actually dated 100 percent. do you know what i mean i thought so that thought crossed my mind the other day what about hovering cars yeah i no, i don't know about hovering cars but i think that what will happen is you know um the you know how like cars are going to be driverless yeah. and i think that's dope because i saw the uh I saw the like the imagery of like if when cars are going to be driverless, like there'll be much less crashes and stuff because uh, the human elements taken out of it. Mm. So like being angry and all that, being impatient, and like everything just runs. I think that's, that's sick. That, well, that's another interesting sensitive topic as well, though, because um, again, I was waiting about this because of another mate of mine. Big break fan. Um, new program that has a training uh, to uh, uh, So. Um, you know, le- like having like legalities in it, like who, who would be to blame? Would it be the program that, like, if, so the scenario was a child being hit by um, a Tesla car, which is basically being driven by itself. Mm-hmm. Um, so whose fault would it be? Would it be the program's fault uh, or the person that invented it or the, the child? Like, you know, I suppose it depends very... on the situation. If it was a car going along, mm-hmm. I'm sure there'll be some sort of like, if the child goes in, gets in the way of the car. What if there was a, say there was a program malfunction? It'd have to be the, it'd be the, the program's fault, wouldn't it? Yeah. See, it's like, it's, it's quite a... You know that thing with Tesla, yeah. when like Tesla, like they had a crash or something and like, they're like, um, but then uh, everyone's like, having got a Tesla because Tesla because one of their driverless cars that had a crash. Mm. Bro, what's crazy, I don't know, I don't have much knowledge on it, but what's crazy is that like, they were saying that we've had so many cars that are driverless that have like um like done like loads of like well, they've been driving for so long that when this car crashed everyone's like hyping over it but how many crashes that happen every day because of humans mm. and like the fact is bro like when you take the human element out of driver out of cars like they're not gonna like crash like by being angry they're not gonna be like drunk driving they're not gonna be um they, they're going to be able to detect like other cars and stuff like that. Do you see what I'm saying? So like, I think the idea of driverless cars is really good because it will cut down loads of crashes because like computers will be able to like detect stuff. Do you know what I mean? Does that make sense? Get rid of human error. Yeah. So like when that Tesla crashed, Tesla's argument was like, how many car crashes happen like every day because of humans? And we had one after like te- doing this like however many thousands of times. But don't you, don't, wouldn't you agree that um, even though human error, errors are eradicated, there's then computer errors? That are implemented. So when what? One replaces oh, the computers. Yeah. So this, uh, I mean, yeah, there might be less. There might be less. It's, I guess it's, it comes down to the scaling, which would be more or less. Um, but yeah, that's an interesting one. Interesting, yeah. I don't know. Are you, are you like? I don't know whether anyone's a fan of Back Back to the Future. Here. No, never no, seen it. I've seen it. I wouldn't say I'm a fan, but I've seen it. You've seen it. So you know the whole hoverboard. Yes. So the, I don't know whether you see. So Lexus had like a campaign recently. Where they actually made like a whole skate park um, uh, with like uh, electromagnetic, it's basically, it's basically had an electromagnetic field and they had like a, a, a skateboard filled with liquid nitrogen and it basically hovered. Really? Yeah, it's crazy. And, like, wow, I'd like to have a go on that. Yeah, so uh, I don't know whether I'd, I'd probably go, I'll probably go to my leg again. Because the, um, what, I can't remember what they're called. Uh, uh, the mini segway. Segways. Yeah. What are they, what are they called? Like a, a oh, hoverboard. Yeah. We yeah, we got one. That, we got one. We got that there. Look there. So there it is. Yeah, we ha- we used to sell them. Really. Really. Out of men's bar. Yeah. We used to sell them. Proper grafter, you, huh, Sam? Look, we're on we're on Instagram Live by the way right now. I'm noticed. You should have asked my permission for that. Nah. Are people tuning in. Uh, we got to, some. You to watch 70, <laughs> Seventeen. What did you say? Yes, Abu Bakr. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah. I see him yesterday. He was. Um, he really enjoyed fifty nine. Did he? Yeah. Did he have the banana on, on sal, sal, what is it called? Sal bread? Sal, sal dough. Sal dough. No, he didn't. He had, um, he had a couple of croissants. A couple? A couple of, a couple of juices, yeah. MashaAllah. And then I, thought he'd, left, Boking, I yeah. thought he'd left the ends and then uh, I go back into 59 to quickly grab something and he was in there buying more juice. Subhanallah. MashaAllah. He's just, he's saying, Waalaikum Salaam. MashaAllah. This is a guy. Oh, look, we've got Mahi saying, taking a quick break, fam. Coffee training to see the brothers. I read that really badly. <laughs> he said, take a quick break from coffee to see the brothers, basically. Um, Mahi, get back to work. 
You've got a lot to do. I think this is really bad podcast etiquette that on podcast we actually use talking to Instagram live. So it's true. Let's carry on with current events. We've read What's the next one? one? All right. Um, next one we've got. What I basically wanted to talk about over yeah. there is okay. So like moving uh, away from that, mm-hmm. it reminded me of a picture that I saw one time um, of a lot of food being wasted in Saudi. Okay. Uh, I think it was during Eid time. There was like there was like you know it looked like uh, uh, tons of rice that was just being thrown away. Yeah. Uh, and it's kind of sad because like we have enough food to like you know feed both halves of the world. I think food gets wasted all around the world, man. It's sad. Like I feel like restaurants in in even here, like you know, like buffets and stuff. I feel like a lot of food goes to waste. But like to the to that scale, it's it's sad. It's very sinful to to, to waste food. It's something that I really try and avoid. But sometimes, mm. unfortunately, it does happen. But I was hearing um, speaking to someone who works in a cafe and they were explaining how much sandwiches go to waste and yeah. they literally have to throw them away. And because of some sort of some sort of whatever they've got in place, they can't even give it to the homeless people. Mm. They have to literally just throw it away. And you imagine how many places actually have to just throw food away. It doesn't, mm. it's not just at all. And I can, mm. I can definitely say, even if the law tell me I have to throw food away, mm-hmm. I don't think I would. I much pref- definitely do everything I could to give it to someone who needs it. Yeah. Avoid wastage at all costs, man. Mm-hmm. Next one, red one. Next one, uh, okay, so we've got Snapchat. Um, I hate Snapchat. Yeah, really? So do I. I I've, I've stopped using Snapchat as much and I use Insta Story now. Yeah, it's good. I hope yeah. everyone does that. You Snap- use Insta Story, don't you, Sam? A lot. Have you seen the sort of the bits no, and pieces? 59, 59, 59 yeah. But do you know what it is? Because if you've got an Instagram account, if you obviously you can see whoever's doing a story. So I yeah. think this brings more people to your page. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So with 59, I just post like random coffees and juices and food bits that are getting made. I think it's just visually people like to see it. Yeah, yeah I like yeah, to see yeah. it. I, I love I watching 59's Instagram stories. Dude, yeah. That's good. It makes me want the... But, and you know what? People have even like said to me in messages like, oh, I follow 59 on Instagram and like, I, I feel like having their food. Yeah. Let me... So what's it? What's 50, so it's 50 underscore 9. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give that a follow later, hopefully. Yeah. Um, Five so zero underscore It's nice. We, we've got the, the fresh soup getting made and the juices getting made and mm-hmm. it's just like basic stuff, but it's nice. It's good. So did you come up with like, uh, like did you and your partners come up with like all the menu and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I did. Um, you're, you're a man, so you enjoy food. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, but the food menu is very, very, very basic to be fair. It's That's nothing cool. nothing complex. It's a bit, ba- how I describe it to people, it's, it's basic stuff done in a nice way. Yeah. So like we do like sour, have you ever had sourdough bread? Sourdough bread, no. It's really nice bread, bread it basically. Really nice. It's like... Uh, I don't, I don't know how to explain it. I'm just going to so call nice. it a high grade bread. So it's toasted toasted bread. So it's toast. Mm-hmm. Top quality. Top quality, but really nice bread. And then really nice organic peanut butter. Mm-hmm. So it's not full of any sh- fake sugars and stuff. And then always beautiful bananas. And then just cinnamon. So it's a, it's a very, ba- it's, it's banana on toast, but done in such a beautiful way. The way you described it, sold it to me. Yeah. More than anything. Exactly. It, it's really nice. It's like it's a beautiful I, toast from a beautiful man. Even though you don't I'll toast it. to that. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> would you? I do serve it. Do you? Oh, you serve mine, didn't you? Thanks, Sam. Thanks for think, taking your hands on my beard. Sorry. Um, <laughs> Sometimes I brush your beard through with my hand. That's what I have a comb here. Do that you know if I use my hand? Just one, one I have hand. a brush here that you've been using, which you're. Uh, do you mind you, me using that? Of course not. You, love for your brother, love for we, your brother what you love for yourself. Can I have that hat? I used that yesterday. Can so I have that hat? Love for your brother what you love for yourself. We actually, um, I'm, sure, I'm sure in Gambia, you, uh, you I might have had some of my food with your hands. I didn't mind no, that was mass. <laughs> really? I don't know. I can't remember clearly. I think maybe you had ever... Uh, that Instagram live was um, very distracting. Very you, distracting. You, I you, think you, that's really you, bad podcast. You went it? silent for half an hour. And every, <laughs> time, every, time, every time I looked around, you were literally just <laughs> looking at it, staring at the screen. That's so bad. Oh, I'm the worst podcaster ever. Okay. Uh, Red, that. is that the end of current events? Uh, yeah. Do you have one more little yeah, one? I was going to give one more. Go on, slide one in. Slide one in, Red. Slide one in. Okay, yeah, so... Yeah, it in, Red. So what... Um, yeah, just put it in. Put the... Yeah, how, just shove it in. Sh- what the heck? Wow. <laughs> just chuck it in there, Red. Just one last men- one. Just mention the last one, Red. We'll do it quickly. Okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> so how safe do you guys feel, like, in terms of um, with police around and things like that? Do you, do you, do you feel like we've got a good secure... secure I, d- I feel safe. You feel safe? Alhamdulillah, I feel safe. I feel safer when the police aren't around, I think. <laughs> aren't around? <laughs> aren't yeah. around. I don't, I've never... No, but he's saying... He, Red, I, don't, I don't think you understand I'm the question. No, 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 okay. I do friend. understand the question. My I'm just not... Inc- my dear brother, I think Red saying... Patronising. Uh, my little friend, I'm uh, older than you. Uh, I hope uh, raise you. Oh, uh, Sammy. I'm he's got a bigger... He's got a you thicker, bigger... You want me to find triceps in my arm like you have. Got bigger what? Beard. Yeah. 
Daddy. Big beard, mashallah, very. Not as big as arms, though. No. Um, so, oh, so rephrase it then. Okay, mean. let's rephrase it. Okay. I think he was saying, like, are you shook of police? Oh. No, 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 no. No, I'm no, not, I'm not shook if the police aren't around. No, yeah, ex- no, no, no. I'm saying, do you think we have a good law enforcement around? Oh. Do you feel like they do everything to, you know, keep us safe? Obviously, not everything is within their hands, but. Do you think they can do everything that they can do? I'm neither here nor there. I'm neither here nor there. I haven't got an opinion on it, man. I, I, I've, 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 I've seen both sides. I've seen goodness come from the police and also a lot of negatives come from the police. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm definitely not one of those people that will feel safer if police are around. I feel like I've been harassed for, for, by the police okay. before. So, and, uh, so I would definitely say... As long, there's, as long as there's a balance, as long as there's police around, say an old lady, someone breaks into their house mm-hmm. and then she can make a f- phone call and police can, can turn up quickly. Those kind of situations, mm. fantastic. But just the ones that generally put around, um, I don't know. I don't know. That I'm from, a, alhamdulillah, I'm from an area which is, is, um, isn't is too, too bad. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm not, neither here or there. But I think it's nice to see a police presence at stations yeah. and airports. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. it's healthy, I think, because yeah. there's obviously there are things that go on through. If there's not football matches, football, it makes more I, sense. I, I, I'm made out of footy recently, mate. <laughs> what's that? 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 Who's that? Who's that on the podcast here then? <laughs> uh, I'm neither here to answer your question, Red One. I'm neither here or there. Can you get off social media? He's having a bucket. He's texting me. He was about this. All right, listen, yeah. Can I just say, yeah, that. Um, <laughs> Uh, I can't remember what I was going to say. Let's just like concentrate. Like, if we're doing so, we're doing a <laughs> podcast. Let's just focus on that. When we finish the podcast, then you can. Report all right, let's have a rule that we don't go on our phones during the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Well, just for yourself. <laughs> right, that's the, re- the end of the podcast. <laughs> the reason why I asked though uh, is because uh, the police actually have a watchdog, so they have an official watchdog. Um, What's that? Um, and it's it's called uh, Her Majesty's Inspectorate of Cans- Const- Constabulary. Constabulary. HMIC basically and they basically do reports on the whole police um, you know uh, department and yeah the, in their recent report the police have basically failed in a lot of like basic functions and it kind of you know makes you wonder um, I studied criminology I don't know if you guys <laughs> I don't know if you guys I don't know if you guys know uh, and one of our modules is called policing and uh, unfortunately uh, what we had studied is that there's a lot of internal rela- uh, sorry, relationships uh, internal racism unfortunately oh, now I'm not saying this about all policemen but I'm saying that w- I'm just saying on a, on a grand scale when we studied policing yeah. uh, we watched some clips unfortunately there was some uh, internal racism um involved in the particular um, case study that we were dealing with. Um, and so there's this like, you know how there's <clears> like, <throat> you know how there's like different cultures and all types of things. Yeah. There's there's a police culture that if you're only, if you're in the police, you would know. But it's, uh, there's, there's, there is a culture in police like the, they, they're like boys with each other. And it's like, just like there's, there's just like there's a lad culture, <laughs> you know, lads. And, lads. Y- yes, right. Uh, and there's like all types of cultures. There's, there is a police culture and then they, they have their police kind of banter and stuff. And um, there is speculation um, through uh, some of my lectures that, you know, there is some internal racism that is involved, which, you know, Alana knows best, but I'm sure there's there's issues with all types of cultures. So, Cool. Well, yeah. uh, we appreciate your input, uh, Fasol. Do you appreciate my input, Sam? Not always. I think I, we appreciate your triceps more than anything right now. <laughs> Oh, okay, don't, guys, don't, don't, that's don't, the end of don't, 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 right, That's actually the end of current events and that's the end of the podcast. <laughs> Sam, how did you think the episode went? Alhamdulillah, I thought it was good. Alhamdulillah. And yourself? Yeah, I think it went really well. Um, do you think that uh, we should... Um, I, I, I personally, unfortunately right now, uh, because of both of our situation stuff, it's not possible to do more than one a week. But do you think that that's something that you would love to do eventually? Eventually, inshallah. Inshallah. His face says otherwise. Viewers. <laughs> you, said, you said eventually, but your face said no. Um... <laughs> I would like to do it more often. Um, maybe we could try it during Ramadan. Maybe in Ramadan we could do, uh, we could select one week and do it every day. What do you mean? We could do a week of many podcasts. Uh, what, and then still do our regular ones? The regular one would be in Ram- Ramadan special, but it would be like maybe do a couple in, the one, in, the, in a week. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. 
I don't think you've got the, that in you. you I don't think I understand what you're trying to say. So I'm just going to I'm sure that. I understand myself. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so like, for like, instance, like, Ramadan, there's oh, a week. Oh, yeah. we're still carrying on this conversation. <laughs> okay. We don't we do, we, 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 shoot it, we do it on a Thursday. We do it on what? We, <laughs> <laughs> Right, we do it on Thursday, yeah? Every Thursday, I like normal. I give up, mate. No, no, please, please, can I you... give up. You're the dominant me. one. You're the one in control. <laughs> you're the stronger one. You're everything. Fine. Just have it. Have the title. I don't want it. No. <laughs> Sam, you're going to make me look so bad on a podcast. You, this is your plan, isn't it? You want to get all the people on your side. It's not about that for me. It's clearly what it's for you. <laughs> Sam, let's you... just... Let's do... In, in Ramadan, let's do some more. We can have do more r- reminders. We can maybe do a few more podcasts in one week and we have a bit more content. So more podcasts, basically. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cut a long story short, we could do a few more. Okay, and we could have maybe like people who are experienced in their fields of more um, guests uh, of, of religion. Yes, yeah, guests. yeah. Just have a bit more of a Ramadan sp- Ramadan specials. Ramadan. Did um, you? Ramadan. <laughs> All right, guys, I wish I was perfect of, like you. I uh, wish. I stuck for last. Stop saying stuff like that, bro. <laughs> I'm joking. May Allah, may Allah bless you. You're uh, an inspiration to us all, man. Nah, you're more inspiration. Trust me. Um, all right, guys, that's the end of the podcast. Just like, like, for listening. We'll see you guys uh, next week. Shalom, alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam, wa rahmatullah.